Hey, how's it going, folks? And uh, here we are live in Studio Squared right now. But you're watching this. We are actually in Akron. This is a little pregame treat here today as we are live with a couple of Tiffin Calvert coaches and the pitcher for today's game. We'll start from all the way on the left, Coach Matt Coleman. How are we doing? Doing great. Thanks for having us, Nate. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And then uh, Blake Coleman, the pitcher for today's game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we got Brian Coleman, assistant coach as well. On with us today. Thanks for coming on with us, guys. Thanks, Nate. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So I just wanted to get a chance to sit down with you guys a little bit before the game. Kind of pick your brain a little bit about what's going on in the days leading up to and just the pregame thoughts here before we get into this one. Um, so obviously a lot of celebrating. We got home, what, Friday night? Yeah. And fanfare. You got the police escort into town from the corner restaurant. I mean, talk about what that meant to you guys as a program. I mean, this is the second year in a row where you've got that warm welcome. What does that mean for you guys as a program? Yeah, no, we we appreciate you covering us and making that trip. We know that's not easy to do. You guys have other jobs and and everything, so we appreciate that first and foremost. Also, just appreciate, you know, Calvert always travels well, um, but just to have the support, you know, Friday night, 11 o'clock at night when we get back in town, Obviously, we needed a little get, get a little grub in our stomachs before we got back. Um, but it was a fun bus ride, and you know, even more fun, you know, coming down two twenty four. Um, just just really appreciate the support from the community. Now, Brian, how many years have you been helping out with coaching here on the Calvert staff? This is this is uh, I'm back in it uh, for the first uh, first year. Okay, uh, I've been uh, coaching at Tiffin University. Had a, a great run there. Uh, for about, uh, I'd say, 18, 19 years. And then uh, I, I knew I wanted to make a little bit of a change, uh, get back to uh, – I lost a lot of time. Um, my daughter played college ball and wanted to uh, get back into the family side of things and watch my son. Um, our Both our sons, Matt and Tucker, well, Tucker and Brandon are both uh, in seventh grade, now, now in eighth grade, and uh, they're going to be coming up. So – Wanted to get back into the family side of things, and it's kind of a, it's kind of cool, you know. We have we have Blake here having a little bit of success, and uh, you know, looking for a lot more success from uh, the younger Coleman. So, it yeah, be don't fun. don't forget there though. You coached back in like the early '90s when the, <laughs> our junior high program got started. Coach Ritzler, who's on staff, you're was right. Just talking about that tonight. So that makes me really old. Yeah. <laughs> and that then he also really coached old. me when I was in high school, my uh, sophomore year back in '95, '96. So. I yeah. am I am the old guy. <laughs> you are the senior on the staff. I am. <laughs> so, all right, Blake, big game today. Um, <clears throat> one thing you said, Brian said you've been playing pretty well lately, but I know that these guys won't let that get to your head. Um, we talked a little bit after the game that you pitched on Thursday against LCC, and we talked about the mental composure that you displayed during that game because you got yourself in a couple of different jams, but you got yourself out of those jams by just trusting your defense, but also maintaining your composure. Talk about what goes into the mental side of the game for you. Yeah, I mean, well, to start, these guys have been fortunate upon me uh, throughout my whole life, really. I mean, you just got to stay calm and you got to show good body language whenever you're playing because there's going to be ups and downs throughout the whole game, no matter what. And you don't know when those moments are going to come, but you just got to keep a good mindset, got to keep good body language and get through it. And then, you know, I know that all I need to do is just throw the ball in the strike zone because you got guys like Ohio guys like Mason and Colin and you got Caden out there in the outfield and all those guys that I know they can glove it behind me. So as long as those guys put in play, I know that there's going to be outs that are going to be made. Absolutely. So you have obviously a tough task here today with I with Highland. Now talk about just your mental thoughts going into this game. Just your you know your thought process leading up to this game. How do you get yourself prepared for a big game like this? Yeah. So last year was nice for us to get there. So hopefully now that we're here today, that I mean, hopefully these lights aren't going to be too big, and we've been in these spots before. So I mean, really just hit my spots and don't try to be too perfect because I know I got the guys behind me that will glove it and honestly just keep a good mindset 
going yeah. the whole way. Through. Yeah, I thought last year, you know, the experience in regionals and in state were were both key to him. I mean, it was it was cool yeah. to see the development last year. He got roughed up for the first time there in the regionals, came back in state the next week, and, and you know, pitched three innings of, of one hit ball. So I think that'll play into things. And like you said, he just got to trust his stuff. Um, you know, the approach would be try to keep him off balance. I think that's a big thing with with Blake. You know, his off speed. And then locating the fastball. I think what he's done this year has been able to command the fastball a little better and make his off speed um, that much better. Yeah. So, all right. So, a couple things I want to talk to you guys about. First off, why I noticed a change last Thursday as you guys started to come out taking taking the field for warm ups. <laughs> there's a there's a change with the coaches. There's a change with the players. They're, they're well represented here today in the interview. <laughs> Talk about what what thought process went into that. I mean, what led to first of all the players all dyeing their hair blonde? Blake, I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to you on that one. What happened there? What yeah. what was the thought process? I don't know. I Who mean, led that charge? That was a whole bunch of guys. Was that I Coach mean, Palm? Was he a part of that? I mean, I know Finley did it. I mean, <laughs> calling him out. Yeah, but. I guess Coach Palm did Coach it. Palm from at Finley. So we all saw that. Thought it was pretty cool. So we thought we should. Do it for our playoff run, and honestly, it just it bring us it brings us together. You know, brings the uh, team chemistry together, and uh, I mean, it makes us all look uniform, I guess yeah. you could say, and makes us all look like a team. So. Yeah, it makes I you mean, look pretty rad too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was kind of one of those things that caught us off guard as coaches. We're thinking, you know, we've been there before. Why, why are you going to choose now? And then, you know, myself as a coach twenty years ago, and you know, being raised by our dad, it would have been something to like raise eyebrows. Probably wouldn't have happened. Um, but, we, you know, we believe there's a sense of individuality they need to have. But then it was cool that all the all the guys did come together and do it. You know, they tried to convince us, um, old guys, to do it. And <laughs> we didn't want our hair falling out or we didn't have hair. So um, we decided to uh, <laughs> go a different route. Go with the man too. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Although I will say, you know, prelude to the game, if you check out Coach Sam Palm in the dugout there today, he's, he's rocking the – you know, the bleach beard. So, Ooh, all right. So I noticed you guys rock the Fu Manchus here, the uh, mustachios. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brian, I don't think I've ever seen you really with facial hair. So this no. is a new look for yeah, me. That's, I, I, I like it. Yeah. And we're just going to keep this going. Yeah. As I long as we it. can. If we, uh, we keep this uh, winning up, uh, who knows? Yeah. We might stick till next year. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Well, I, I met and, and, and this is not dyed. <laughs> this is gray. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Same hair. Same hair. We, Highlighted with with tips here. That's awesome, Matt. You had a pretty thick uh, beard growing in there before you uh, decided to yeah. go with the Fu yep. Man. So that is uh, that's looking pretty lush. Cheated a little. I I told my wife if if we win it all, I might scare her. I get a little creepy when I get just mustache. So look out <laughs> if we win it all, I'll scare some more people. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, final thoughts before we get to the program here today. I don't want to spend too much time here on the interview because, I mean, you guys got a lot of thought, you got a lot of pro a lot of uh, preparing to do before the game. So what do you, what are your thoughts right now as you get ready for this game? Matt, I'll start with you, Coach. What do you have to do to get these guys mentally ready for this one? Yeah, I think it's just keeping that even keel mentality right now feels like Christmas. We're ready to go. We're excited. We feel prepared. We feel like we belong. Um, just not being overwhelmed and not being satisfied. Just playing our game. We know they're a really good team over there. Um, you know, in Highland, they're, you know, a classy team. They play the game hard. Um, one through nine in their lineup, do it well. They got the player of the year. They got the coach of the year. We know about them, but I, I really yeah. feel like in, in, in our team, if we believe in ourselves, um, we control our things, and when, and when each pitch kind of break the game down, just really excited, excited about the opportunity. I think I think we have a good shot. Blake, you know, as you get ready, like I said, the mental part is one. one that's one part of the game, but <clears throat> when you guys you, when you guys are at your best, I feel like there's a lot of noise coming from that dugout. I feel like there's a lot of chirping going on. You guys are really encouraging each other. What do you have to do? to make sure that the, the 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 tone is right going into this one? How do you guys get ready for this one tomorrow to make sure that everybody's just loose? Yeah, I mean, everybody has a role on our team. That's the good thing about our team is everyone's got something to do and everyone does it the right way and everyone knows what their job is and they do it to the best of their ability and they do it well. Guys like 
Brody Cooper in the dugout. He always knows what to say. I mean, and keeps all the books and stuff for us, and he lets us know when where the ball is going to go and stuff like that. So it's just little guys like – little guys that people may see from the outside and may think that they might be, like, little or might not impact the game, but it's the guys like that that really – do impact the game and help us win ball games really yeah help to set the tone for the whole yeah, team for sure and besides it's 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 the bases are 90 feet right that's right so it's it's it, you don't want to say it's just another game but it's just another game so yeah and how do you i mean brian we'll close with you so you mentioned that just before we got back here started this interview how do you get that mentality into the players? Because obviously you have that mentality. You've been in this game for a long time. You've been around this game for a long time. But some of these kids haven't. There's a lot of freshmen on this team. Yeah, and I think how that's do you part, instill I, that? In I think there? that's part of my job. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not the coach I used to be. Uh, if you ask my brother, I was pretty uh, pretty intense coach. Um, you know, that, I guess that comes from our dad. Our dad was pretty calm, but he he instilled the right uh, the right mentality into us. Always wanted us to be competitive, um, never giving up, right? Yep. So, um, you know, just just having the calm, cool, collective uh, attitude. You know, sometimes I look out on the mound and I see, I see Blake over here smirking and things like that. And you know, I I, I get it, but that's also times for me to go ahead and grab him, help Matt out, take those guys off to the side. You know, make a few suggestions when things are getting a little bit heated and. Uh, you know, we, we we still asked Dad for uh, a little bit of advice the other day when that got a little bit uh, crazy, right? Yeah. In the sixth inning. Oh yeah. Yeah, Matt's like, you know, we're <laughs> we're thinking second guessing him, and and I'm second guessing myself. I'm like, hey, man, man, just ask the guy up top. He <laughs> he probably knows. So, uh, I think uh, there's a couple guys up there for us. So helping us out yeah it's awesome I, there's got to be something going on man because you guys have got the magic formula this year it just really feels like every every time i'm around this club there's a different energy there's a different chemistry it's been that way since last year but it really carried over in a big way into this year more so than i think a lot of people saw it coming so i think that's a lot, a lot of credit goes yeah. to you guys so hats off for a great season, but I know you guys aren't done yet. So yeah, I, I think it is you know them buying into the roles like Blake was talking about too. I think about a guy like Jamison Godfrey. He was a yes. main pinch runner last year, and now this year is kind of a more of a defensive role. Just accepting that. I yep. mean, yes, he'd love to be you know hitting two hole, hitting nine four for us or whatever, but he's accepted his role and he's doing it you know at a high level, and um, it's just really cool. It, it just makes you think that's what this game's about. At the end of the day, yeah. it's a game like you're going to get into an employer and you're going to have to do your job really well. And sometimes you're not going to like your boss. And I, I realize that being the coach, sometimes they don't like my decisions or how <laughs> we do things, but it's a life lesson. And um, yeah, we're fortunate to be in the spot. We're thankful to be in a, you know, such a community, a positive community like this. And we hope to make them, make them proud, make the SPC proud, make Northwest Ohio proud, make heart of Ohio sports proud and, and uh, win or lose. We're going to, we're going to come out, you know, swinging, playing hard. Well, coach, coaches, Blake, thank you guys once again for coming on. I appreciate your time. And uh, let's play some ball. Yeah, thank you. let's go. Go Blue. Thank you. All right. Thanks again, folks. We'll join the broadcast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this special tournament edition of High School Baseball right here on Heart of Ohio Sports. Today's broadcast presented by Shkodet Mexican Restaurant and your legacy, Federal Credit Union. We are live from Canal Park here in Akron, Ohio, the, the site, the home of the Rubber Ducks. Nate Mullins on the call with you, Tommy Hall on the call as well. We got the A-team on the 
on the broadcast today. Austin Rodriguez on the camera and Greg Ken, the wizard, on the ones and twos. We are here once again for this state semifinal matchup. And Tommy, whew, we got a doozy here today. It's a beautiful day for baseball. It's 30 and 2. Tiffin Calvert take on the Berlin Highland Hawks. Here's the first pitch brought to you by Hope and Faustoria. And that went in there for a strike. And we're underway here in Akron, Ohio. Alec Weaver leads off for the Hawks to start this one in this Division IV state semifinal, Nate. Blake Coleman on the mound for the Senecas today. Once again, thanks for tuning in. We are live on our website at heartofohiosports.com. Weaver sends this one into left field, but it's playable, and the left fielder camps underneath of it and squeezes it for the first out. And that's what you want if you're Blake Coleman and his Tiffin Calvert Seneca squad. You want to get some quick early outs here, Tommy, to gain some confidence as you can roll with that confidence and that momentum starts to build a little bit. Absolutely. As Blake Coleman makes his return off his freshman campaign last season at this same exact spot, looking to get to the promised land this Saturday in the state championship. First pitch misses to Cody Yoder. Yoder, the DH. Weaver let off things. He was the shortstop out of the two hole. And 2-0 two oh the count now on Yoder. Coleman just sends one down at 80 miles an hour. Put a little more heat on that one. And Yoder sends this one into right field. Shoemaker races wow. over to make the play. And we talk about a Calvert squad that is has a bevy of weapons with this youthful wave, and that's one of those answers that you have out there as uh, A.J. Shoemaker, the two-hole batter for the Tiffin Calvert Senecas, just has a huge arm all the way out there in right field. Able to, He's actually had some throw, throw outs at home, Nate. Absolutely. Nolan, and that one misses inside. Nolan Yoder, the uh, All-Ohio Player of the Year in Division Four, the ace pitcher for the Hawks. For those of you tuned in earlier for the interview before this game, that one smoked Look down the third one. base line, but Mason Johnson's going to fire it over to first. And a one, two, three inning for Blake Coleman is exactly the way you start. You want to start this one if you're Tiffin Calvert. As the Highland Hawks go one, two, three. Tiffin Calvert due up next in the bottom of the first. And still no score here at Canal Park. Let's take a moment and thank all of our sponsors here for bringing you today's ball game here on Heart of Ohio Sports. Thanks to our presenting sponsors, Shkadet Mexican Restaurant and Your Legacy Federal Credit Union. We also want to thank Hope and Faustoria, MST Sauce Company, Lee's Floor Covering, Linda S. Ritzler Accounting, TPC Food Service, Ewald's Furniture, BNE Barbecue, Circle H Tire, DAH Wraps, Benchwarmers Restaurant and Delivery, Feasel's Frame and Collision, First National Bank of Sycamore, Steinmetz, Signs and Graphic Inc., Klaus Electric, GW's Restaurant, and Simply Susan's, as well as Carmi's. And Carmi's, speaking of them, Adam Smith set up in the suite right next to us here today, guys. That's a... <laughs> Get to be neighbors with uh, the Carmi guy himself. Yeah, and Carmi's just a great supporter of Calvert Athletics and Heart of Ohio Sports has seen this uh, tournament run being broadcast out there by Carmi, so we can't thank Adam enough for uh, throwing that support and supporting us, bringing this game live and paywall free for you right here on heartofohiosports.com, which, again, the video broadcast of this version will play in its entirety following this uh, broadcast. So if you made the trek over to Akron, there might be a chance you might be able to catch this game, but uh, it's going to be a long night. And uh, it's going to be a long night for these Berlin Hawks as uh, Coleman able to go one, two, three in succession to uh, bring up Nick Palm leading. So Nick Palm will lead things off for Tiffin Calvert here as we get ready to start the bottom half of the first inning. And Nick Palm, again, he might be enshrined in that Calvert Hall of Fame one day. The career hits and runs leader for the Calvert Senecas. Only played three seasons, Nate. But an impressive three seasons they have been. What do you want to talk about impressive? Right there, that ace on the mound for the Hawks. Nolan Yoder. Like we talked about, top of the program. Division four player of the year. And he is really an ace bringing these Hawks to a 28-1 record. Coming into the night as that one sends. 
evens the count at one and one. Yoder comes set here. And Palm fouls this one up into the sweet level. It's going to be a nice little gift for one of the uh, Calvert parents up here. <laughs> but did you notice how no Yoder, no time wasted in that motion, had the 1-1 one, one count just and completely just wound up and took another shot. Nick Palm thought the better of it. Pulls back just in time. That'll even the count now at 2-2 two and two on the senior Nick Palm. Here's the pitch from Yoder. This one fouled straight up and off the sweet deck. Calvert faithful. That is one sweet deck. <laughs> it is one sweet deck. There's the pitch from Yoder. That one outside. Uh, Try to get him a chase. Outside, a little outside there. Yep. Try to get him a chase that one. Now it's a full count here. Oh, I love that they have the pitch speed up there on the scoreboard. Yep. And this is exactly what you want to do if you're Tiffin Calvert. you got to work the count. Make him throw you your pitch. And look at that one. Smoke right down, down the first baseline. Palm quickly out of the box, but the first baseman over to cover to make the play as Grady Monigold gets the put out there. One down for A.J. Shoemaker. The winner of this to face the winner of that Rusha and St. Henry game, which concluded with Rusha finding their way to the state championship this Saturday at 1 o'clock. We'll see which one of these two teams will be joining them in that final. The pitch to Shoemaker is in there for a strike. I was going to say, that one sailed right down the middle. Delayed call here from the umpire here today, so we'll have to just kind of wait and see what his call is before we decide what it is. That one's got to be in there, too. And he smokes that one in there for a strike. It's 0-2 quickly on A.J. Shoemaker. They're taking a patient approach here. That one in the dirt. And it's 1-2 and two now on Shoemaker. Nolan Yoder, 11-0 and 0 on the season with a 1.2 ERA. Which means Calvert's going to have their work cut out for him. Yeah. The pitch to Shoemaker is inside. So it evens the count at 2-2. Two and two. A.J. Shoemaker fell behind 0-2. Now worked himself back into this one. Here's the pitch. Check swing, and that one misses. So it's 3-2 and two now. So he's gone full count to the first two yeah. batters of the game. This is exactly what you want here if you're Tiffin Calvert. Make him work for it. And that Got one him. in there for a strike. Shoemaker goes down looking. And that is out number two. That'll bring up Mason Johnson. <laughs> Talk about making Yoder work for it. He uh, punched out John Shoemaker right there as the big Johnson makes his way up to the plate. Mason Johnson, who also is a career leader in RBIs for the Senecas, is that first pitch sails in there. I think it was a ball. Just misses. 1-0 the count now on Johnson. Johnson, the SBC River Offensive Player of the Year. Outside again. And Yoder misses with that one. It's 2-0. Yoder brings the heat there on that one of 83 miles. Mm -hmm. Now our pitch. That one low, and it is now 3-0 and on Mason Johnson. The big Johnson steps into the batter's box with a 3-0 count. Here's the pitch from Yoder, and Johnson hits this one to second. The second baseman gloves it and throws it over to first for the final out here in the bottom of the first. 1-2-3 goes the Senecas. No score as we head to the top of the second. We'll step aside, take a quick timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Your Legacy Federal Credit Union your premier financial institution in Seneca County since 1952. Your community, your legacy, federally insured NCUA. You're watching right here on Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. All 
All right, and we're back here at Canal Park in Akron, Ohio, home of the Rubber Ducks. Nate Mullins on the call with Tommy Hall, and we've got Austin Rodriguez on the camera. That's right, folks. I know you're listening, but you can watch back. That's after the broadcast is over. We're allowed to do a tape-delayed broadcast, so you can watch back all the action right here on Heart of Ohio Sports as we will be live-streaming the tape-delayed broadcast as soon as we're done here at Canal Park. But once again, no scores. We set to start the top half of the second inning. Today's broadcast presented by Chicadet Mexican Restaurant and your legacy federal credit union. We'll take a moment and uh, cover the bases brought to you by DAH Raps. Let's talk about the defensive alignment for Tiffin Calvert today. As you go behind the plate, Connor Moyer on the mound. Blake Coleman over to first base, Cameron Moyer. Second baseman today is Jamison Godfrey. At third base, Mason Johnson. At shortstop today is Nick Palm. In left field, Harry Schultz. In center field, Caden Otterbacher. And the right fielder is A.J. Shoemaker. As Blake Coleman starts Caden Koblenz out with a strike. And it's 0-1 the count here. That one in there for a strike. And it's quickly 0-2 on Koblenz. We talk about those keys of the game here as uh, get ready for the 0-2 count as Coleman sends it in there. But uh, this is one of those games where you got to be careful. You, I know you got to. Strike three Damn. called. Coleman sits him down looking. Cole Blentz didn't agree with it, but I'll tell you what. Coleman fired that one in there. That was a beautiful looking pitch right on the outside corner. That'll bring up Isaac Yoder. Coleman, first pitch is fouled off on the bunt attempt by Yoder. <laughs> These Hawks like to play small ball, Tommy. They will, they will take any opportunity they are given to get a guy on base, and then they will use everything in their arsenal to move him over and get him home. Yoder hits this one to short, palm gloves, and throws it over to first for the first out here in the top half of the second inning. Again, you're not going to sneak too much past this infield of the Seneca. There's a lot of uh, quality gloves out there, and that's what we talk about, Nate. you got to be careful of this turning into a pitching duel for what works for the Hawks is exactly what's going to work for the Senecas, the way they play between the bases. There's four Yoders in this lineup. Smoke to short, right past the diving Nick Palm. And Brady Yoder works his way aboard with a two-out single. Then I'll bring up Grady Monadold. I think it's Monagold. Misspelling on the scoreboard there. <laughs> Looks like they spelled it right on the little name and spelled it wrong on the big picture that they made of them. <laughs> that's that's the worst mistake uh, to make. It could have made it on the little name. That'd been fine, but not the big one. I'd be Come kicking on. myself so hard right now. <laughs> you know how I am. Well, you'd have never spelled monodold. You'd have said, nah, hey. it's not dold. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the poor kid. One thing I uh, heard about these Hawks when I was doing a little bit of research they have been to this semi. This is the fifth time they've been in this semifinal round. They have never lost. Wow. Never lost. Yoder keep continuously thinks about taking that bag. Amount of gold. Watches that one for a ball. It's 2-0. and oh. Runner down at first base. Two down. For a great amount of gold. Here's the 2-0 from Coleman. That went in there for a strike, and it's 2-1. Took a little bit off of that, 166 on the speed gun. That one just kind of picked, uh, picked its trajectory there. It kind of brought itself back down. They call that one a ball as well. Misses with that one. It's 3-1 and one now on Monogold. And Monogold hits this one to second, oh. right past Jamison Godfrey. Shoemaker 
up and throws it over to second base, but the runner is in safely. So runners at first and second now with two down. And that'll bring up the catcher, Braden Kaufman. This Hawks lineup, they are solid from top to bottom, Tommy. Oh, absolutely. There's not a uh, weak link in this lineup. Again, you don't uh, wake up and accidentally find yourself in the state semifinal. Quality at-bats, quality squads, quality coaching. I mean, it all comes together. First pitch in there to Kaufman. It's 0-1. Runners at first and second. Two down. Blake Coleman comes set. Here's the 0-1. Oh, come on. That one misses inside. It's 1-1 one one now. There's a little bit too much inside there. Coleman comes set. Here's the pitch, and Kaufman skies this one into the air. Somebody's got to call for it, and Otterbacher does. And that's the final out here in the top half of the second inning. Hawks have two hits, but they strand two runners as we head to the bottom half of the second inning. It's no score here at Canal Park in Akron, Ohio. Nate Mullins and Tommy Hall on the call with you. Today's broadcast presented by Chicadette Mexican Restaurant and your legacy Federal Credit Union. I want to take some time and thank all of our sponsors for allowing us to be here today. Big shout out and a thank you to Hope and Fostoria, MST Sauce Company, Lee's Floor Covering, Linda S. Ritzler Accounting, TPC Food Service, Ewald's Furniture, BNE Barbecue, Circle H Tire, DAH Wraps, Benchwarmers Restaurant and Delivery, Feasel's Frame and Collision, First National Bank of Sycamore, Steinmetz Signs and Graphic Inc., Klaus Electric, GW's Restaurant, Simply Susan's, and Carmi's Restaurant. Once again, I mentioned BNE Barbecue, one of our new sponsors here today. We had quite a few sponsors jump on board with us since last Friday as they want to be, they want to show their support for this Calvert squad. But BNE Barbecue, folks, there's still time for you to get in your pre order at BNE Barbecue. This Saturday is the day for barbecue, but if you want to get ahead of the crowd, you need to place your pre order now. Accepting pre orders until tomorrow, that's Friday, June 9th at 8 p.m. This weekend's menu includes baby back ribs, that's full rack only, pulled pork, chicken leg quarters, and for sides, they offer smoked mac and cheese, smoked sausage, and burnt ends. Get your order in now by finding them on Facebook and send them a message. That's BNE Barbecue. Of course, if you didn't check it out recently, Greggy and I went over and uh, did a little uh, mulling it over episode over there with Bill Alford. Yeah, that was some good video and some good eating. Connor Moyer starts out. First pitch was outside. That one in there for a strike. It's now one and one the count. That one misses. Outside, two and one the count. Yeah, that was some really good barbecue. I'll tell you this much. Oh. The only way I'm going to miss it this Saturday is if we're here. That's, that's <laughs> right. That's absolutely right, Greggy. And even so, I think if I say something to Billy, it's say, hey, man, can you just uh, put me a little bit of, you know, pull pork <laughs> off to the side, a little bit of burn ins, you know. I'm very excited to have uh, B&E Barbecue along as we keep our eye on that pitch. That's a pedometer giving you bringing the smoke by BNE Barbecue. That pitch speed, 68. Start count starting to build. And Moyer fouls this one straight back. It's three and two the count now. That is three out of the first four batters he has faced. He's went to a full count now, Tommy. So they are working the pitch count here. And they're trying to uh, run up the count here on Nolan. Oh, Logan. look at Moyer. And Moyer smokes that one into left field for a base hit. And Connor Moyer. A smoke that Billy Alford could be proud of there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Moyer smoked that one in the second half of the Super Moyer brothers coming up to bat as the five hole for Cameron Moyer. Again, this is where the Calvert Senecas start to become dangerous. Once you start getting down in that lineup, you got guys like uh, Cameron Moyer, who's, you know, 500 to getting on a bag. Yeah. Batting average might fool you with Cam because he's batting around 270 on the season, but that on-base percentage, Tommy, he's got a great eye, over 25 walks on the season. I think he's almost 
close to 30 walks on the season. He's been hit by a pitch 11 times. So he'll find his way on base. That one. Upstairs, it's quickly 2-0. Oh. I'm going to say that one high. In the dirt, it's 3-0 and the count here on Cam Moyer. And you won't see it until you watch the video broadcast, but again, these uh, Calvert Senecas, they definitely got uh, the Ric Flair drip going on. You see right. a lot of the blonde lettuce, bleach <laughs> hair jobs going on. That went in there for a strike at 76 <laughs> mile an hour. So he was up near 80 at the beginning of this game. His velocity's dropped quite a bit here in the second inning. I don't know if that was maybe a slider or. <laughs> you hear the kids out here on the balcony trying to guess the pitch yep. speed before it shows up. Yep. <laughs> That's a fun little game. I love it. 3-0 <laughs> and o the count here. Actually, I think it's 3-1, and one, right? Yeah. Yeah. He just fouled that one. And that went in there for oh. a strike, and it's now three and two. So a full count once again. That is four out of the first five batters. He's worked Moyer. to a full count now. I <laughs> thought he had it there. Yeah, he totally did. He thought he was going to yeah. walk there. You got to be careful doing that. It could though. be a little distress. You know, it could be in a little distress there. And that one nope. outside, and he draws the walk. So the Senecas get their first two base runners aboard here in the bottom half of the second inning. Nobody out as Blake Coleman strolls to the plate here. The pitcher would love to put this one into right field down that line and make it bounce around like a, pink, like a pinball. <laughs> a chance for a clutch hit presented by Circle H Tire. As we'll start off 1-0 here. And that one misses, and it's 2-0 and the count on Coleman. So Yoder's having some control issues here. This is something we were not expecting to see today is we really expected to see the dominant version of Nolan Yoder. And that one gets away from the catcher. It's going to go all the way to the uh. backstop. Gives enough time for Cam and Connor Moyer to scooch over from first and second over to second and third. So now it's 3-0 and the count on Blake Coleman. Well, here the thing is uh, Yoder uncharacteristically – Gave up a hit against uh, Moyer, and then, the, uh, then walked the other one. Now you're starting to uh, have that peripheral start coming into play. Yoder's got to be aware of his surroundings as well as the pitch. The 3-0 is in there for a strike to Coleman. So it's 3-1 and one now. So talk about you have an ace pitcher like Yoder who doesn't allow a lot of hits, but yet these Senecas will still find a way to get on base. Yeah. That one sails down. Right down the pipe, and it's back to a full count here. 78, 77, back to back. Is that five out of the first six batters he's faced? He's went to a full count now. So he's got to be close to about 35 pitches right now. And we are just into the second inning bottom half, and there's still nobody out. Well, here's a chance again with runners on second and third. Coleman, a chance to bring one in, kind of give himself a little bit of respite when he takes on the mound, but Seneca's looking for a long inning Coleman here. Coleman straight back up the middle, shortstop gloves and throws to the plate, and he'll be out at the plate, but runners at first and third now for Hawk. Harrison Schultz. Hawks save a run. Connor Moyer tried to slide in there, but I think he might have slid just a little too soon, but I think the, the throw was there anyway, Tommy. It didn't matter. Yep, he was just throwing himself into it and seeing what yep. would happen. Trying to see if he could break the play up there, but. I think Matt Coleman wants to come out here and talk about making a substitution here. Yep, I think we're going to get a pinch runner here, a relief runner. Get some speed Courtesy there runner. Third. Sorry, courtesy runner for uh, Cam Moyer will bring in. 45? Cashley. Ooh, cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> So runners on the corners, one down for the Senecas after Moyer was tagged out at home plate. 
Harrison Schultz at the plate, righty-lefty matchup. Schultz fouls this one off to the left and out of play. Schultz has taken a pretty aggressive approach over these last couple of games. He's really come out and started swinging at those first couple pitches. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I think Austin was trying to follow that one. I lost the camera for a second and came back. <laughs> <laughs> and a swing and a miss from Harrison Schultz. Quick 0-2. And Nolan Yoder has him down in the count, 0-2. See if the magic man can uh, pull something out of his hat here. Oh, Schultz with the 0-2 swings and sends this one into left field. Oh. Should be deep enough. They're going to send the runner. Cash Lee, he's going to score. And the Senecas are on the board first. <laughs> Did you like that? Yeah. And <laughs> Schultz definitely pulls a rabbi out of his hat. RBI, single in. A sack fly for... Harrison Schultz deep enough to score the run, and the Senecas take the lead 1-0 here in the bottom of the second inning. And every run is going to be earned here. So, again, that one run that the Senecas just played it, that may have to be the difference maker because I don't see this one being a uh, high-scoring affair. I don't either. As that game between St. Henry and Rusha almost pushing extra innings until Rusha is able to pull that one right out at the very end in the bottom of the seventh. Kidwell swings and fouls this one straight back. Jacob Kidwell at the plate, one of four freshmen in the lineup here today for Tiffin Calvert. Throw over to first, and the runner back safely. Blake Coleman down at first base. Two down here in the bottom of the second. one nothing Tiffin Calvert. That one inside, inside to, Col to uh, Kidwell, and it's two and one. What a call by Coleman, though, to, again, in that situation, substituting in the runner. Oh, gets a little a bit grounder by Kidwell. To the second baseman, glove, throw to first, and that's the final out here in the bottom of the second. But the Senecas, they plate one run, and that is an important run, folks. I'm telling you what. Every run is going to be important today. The Seneca's on top, one nothing as we head to the top of the third. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Betting happens as fast as sports and now every play is faster than ever before. You're on the edge of your seat until the moment when it's all on the line, which is why it's important to pause before you play. Sports are fast, betting shouldn't be, so remember to set limits, know the risks, and pause before you play. To learn more, visit pausebeforeyouplay.org. Brought to you by Hope and Faustoria and the Carsa Coalition of Seneca County. You're watching right here on Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. And we're back here at Canal Park in Akron, Ohio, home of the Rubber Ducks. Nate Mullins and Tommy Hall on the call with you today. Austin Rodriguez on the camera and the wizard, Greg Kinn, on the ones and twos. Keeping us live, making us look good, making us sound good today as we are live on heartofohiosports.com for the live audio stream. And folks, for those of you tuned in trying to figure out why can't I watch it? Well, OHSAA has these weird rules and we're allowed to do a delayed broadcast. So if you <laughs> want to tune in and watch the repeat broadcast tonight, and I'm sure you're going to want to because it's going to be a good one. You can go back and watch it and we'll do the uh, live broadcast as soon as we're done here. Leading off here in the top of the third, Connor Beachy out of the nine hole, the second baseman. And the first pitch misses high from Coleman. Just an exciting first three innings here. A little overcast in the sky, 69 degree day. Thanks to that weather report by TPC Food Service. 
Tommy, you talk about overcast. When we were driving over here, it was sunny, but inside the car, it was not it was not sunny at all. It seemed like it was like we're looking at right now with this overcast because and that one swung on, hit to third. Mason Johnson throws it over to first for the first out. But no, DAH wraps. Don Henney did an outstanding job. He picked up the Hoosmobile, and he <laughs> I mean he did a lot to that vehicle. He applied a ceramic coating, which will help with the uh, UV rays coming into the car. He applied some window tinting to uh, make us a lot cooler inside the car, and it cuts down on the sun glare. But I tell you, folks. It's about the only way to make you cool. That is about the only <laughs> way to make me cool, for sure. <laughs> I lost my camera again. So it's back again. <laughs> but if you want to get your vehicle looking top-notch, Give Don Henney a call, 419-552-9079. Message him on Facebook. You can find it D-A-H Raps. As Blake Coleman comes set, here's the 1-0 to Alec Weaver, and that one's in there for a strike. Evens the count at 1-1. One, one. one down, nobody on here on the top of the third. Services include for D-A-H Raps, full vinyl color change, and that one swung on, hit the third, and foul. And that's for cars, trucks, vans, boats, bikes, golf carts, anything you can imagine. He can probably change the color on it, folks. And he, does, he also does business and commercial wraps, clear or colored Flexi Shield paint protective film, window tint for automotive, commercial, and residential, headlight, taillight tint, and vinyl gun wraps. That's D A H wraps. You can find him on Facebook. One, two, the count as Coleman with a chance to sit him down delivers one high. Try to get him to chase that high fastball there. You ain't kidding about him being able to turn anything into a wrap, Nate. He showed me this bike that he did that was the inside of a guy's jacket. That's oh. what the pattern was. It was nice. Ooh. Oh, come on. That man. one was low. <laughs> and it's a full count now on Alec Weaver. Highland Hawks out of Berlin. Anyone? In there, strike three oh, called. Weaver that. was trotting down to first, thinking he had the walk. Well, who do a walk to the dugout? <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> yeah, not happy as uh, Seneca's now with two down. Chance to close out the top of this inning. As it's been a tremendous first three min innings of action thus far with the Seneca's on top, one nothing here from Canal Park. That first pitch in there yep. for a strike to Cody Yoder. That one skips in the dirt. And it's one and one. Two down here in the top of the third. one nothing. Tiffin Calvert. They lead over Highland in the state semifinal. Swung on, fouled off by Cody Yoder. We'll come back and do it at one and two. Must have been an impressive catch over there <laughs> in the stands somewhere. Yeah, somebody caught it. Winner to move on and face Rushi, which will be played this Saturday right here at Canal Park. The one and two is just inside. Evens account at two and two. Yoder 0-1 on the day today. Here's the 2-2 from Coleman. Swung on, fouled off to the right. And behind home plate. Umpire coming in. I think he's telling somebody they had to scoot back. Probably the person in the batter's on deck or whatever. Yeah, There's Austin, come on. What are you doing? No, not Austin. Just, <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just joking. 2-2 <laughs> the count. The 2-2 misses. High and outside, and it's a full count here on Yoder. The 3-2. Swung on, hit into center field. Otterbacher tracking it, and he camps underneath of it to make the play nice. for the final out. So, Seneca's retired the Hawks. One, two, three. We head to the bottom of the third. It's 1-0 Tiffin Calvert. 
Nate Mullins, Tommy Hall on the call with you here today. Thanks for tuning in. Today's broadcast presented by Chicadet Mexican Restaurant and your legacy federal credit union. We talk about Chicadet Mexican Restaurant, folks. They are a staple in the Tiffin community. They have a large party room. They have plenty of room for your biggest party. And if you have that party, if you want to have that party at home, well, folks, check out their catering menu where they offer taco platters, nacho platters, and much more to help take the burden off of you when planning your next event. Gather your friends. Go get some queso. You deserve it. Treat yourself to the best at Chicadet Mexican Restaurant located in the Tiffin Mall. Of course, today's announcer cam brought to you by Lee's Floor Covering. Tommy, why don't you tell the folks about our friends at Lee's Floor Covering? Oh, Mr. Lee, well, why go to Lee's Floor Covering and Tiffin? Why not just go to one of those big do-it-yourself box stores? Because at Lee's Floor Covering, they know that selecting the right flooring for your home can be overwhelming. They make choosing the right items for your home simple. At Lee's Floor Covering, they have one of the largest selections of floor covering in Northwest Ohio, and they make the decision-making an easy process. Stop in and see what everyone raves about at Lee's Floor Covering in Tiffin. Guy to see is Mr. Lee. That's there right. Lee's Floor Covering. One of our proud sponsors here throughout the postseason with us on Heart of Ohio Sports. Here we are, bottom of the third. Caden Otterbacher leading things off as Nolan Yoder starts him out with a ball in the dirt. Otterbacher takes a swing at that one, chops oh. it to third. Third baseman comes over to make the play and throws it over to first. That's the first out in the inning. And that'll bring up Nick Palm. Seneca's back to their top of the order. That was a nice play on, by the third baseman there is. Otterbacher out of the box like Seabiscuit. Normally can uh, outrun that to first base. That time, head on a swivel as uh, Calvert now has one down with Nick Palm up to bat. Sells in there for a strike. Palm watches that one on the outside corner for a strike. Here's the 0-1 from Yoder. Upstairs, it's 1-1. One and one. I always love it. The little, the little, the inside game in baseball is just. As Palm fouls that one straight back, it's just the little back and forth. You know, like Nick Palm, first call he didn't agree with it. Second call, the catcher he held that throw just for a split second because you could tell he didn't agree with the call. When you and know, it's like, and when you know you're going up against a quality hitter. A guy like Yoder, he is going to challenge that batter. You've seen a couple of those go down there almost 80 miles an hour, just right down the gullet as Palm goes down. And Yoder looks to be settling in now as he gets the strikeout on Nick Palm. Two down here in the bottom of the third. That'll bring up A.J. Shoemaker. 76-mile-an-hour fastball down the middle, 78. Directly after that, sits Palm down, brings up A.J. Shoemaker. Shoemaker watches that one in there for a strike. Yoder working ahead in the count here in the third inning, first time. <laughs> and you turn that cheek out when it comes at you inside, not when it's yeah. not that far outside. And it's quickly 0-2 the count now on A.J. Shoemaker. <laughs> Two down here in the bottom of the third, nobody on. one nothing. Tiffin Calvert. Yoder comes set. And the 0-2 just misses. Boy, they wanted that one. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't bad looking. That one misses, so it's 2-2 two and two now on Shoemaker. Here's the 2-2 from Yoder. That one's in there. Strike three called. And Nolan Yoder sits him down. His second strikeout in the inning. So he gets two on a strikeout. That's going to do it for the third inning. We're going to step aside, take a quick timeout. We'll be back with the top of the fourth. It's one nothing. Tiffin Calvert. We'll be back after this. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports.
Why go to Lee's Floor Covering of Tiffin? Why not just go to one of those big box DIY stores? Because at Lee's Floor Covering, they know that selecting the right flooring for your home can be overwhelming. They make choosing the right items for your home simple. At Lee's Floor Covering, they have one of the largest selections of floor covering in Northwest Ohio. They make the decision-making process easy. Stop in and see what everyone raves about at Lee's Floor Covering in Tiffin. You're watching right here on Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. All right. And we're back. We're at Canal Park in Akron, Ohio, home of the Rubber Ducks. Nate Mullins and Tommy Hall on the call with you here today. Greg Kinn, the Wizard, on the ones and twos. And we have Austin Rodriguez on the camera. That's right, camera, folks. You can watch back the broadcast later on as, as soon as we're done here. We'll pack things up, and uh, we'll try to broadcast the game from here. If they won't let us, well, then we'll head home, and we'll broadcast it at home. Either way, we'll get the broadcast presented here on Heart of Ohio Sports to you later tonight. Once again, one nothing is your score as we are set to start the top half of the fourth inning. Today's broadcast presented by Chicadette Mexican Restaurant and your legacy federal credit union. we got a lot of sponsors to thank here today, folks, and we're going to go ahead and thank a lot of those sponsors periodically throughout the program, so... We appreciate all of the contributions from all of our sponsors, and uh, we appreciate you for tuning in here today on the broadcast with us. one nothing, Calvert, Blake Coleman on the mound. Nolan Yoder, the pitcher at the plate, watches the first one up high for a ball. Yoder takes a swing at that one and fouls it off to the left. Boy, he squared up on that one. Kid's a heck of a ball player, I'll tell you that. Division four player of the year right here. Highland's been the number one seed pretty much all season long in Division four. Tiffin Calvert trailing them most of the season at that two spot. As Yoder hits this one into center field, but Otterbacher camps underneath of it, and he'll make the play for the first out. So, a heck of a hit, but way too much air time. Yep, just got under it a little bit. And that'll bring up – did he say Colin? I'm pretty sure he did, but that's Caden. Caden it is Colin. It's not supposed to be Caden. Who's on the big graphics today? Come on. <laughs> on the roster, it says Colin. Huh. So I'm guessing it's Colin. Colin Koblenz fouls this one at the plate. I think it went off his foot. Works his way back in the outer, into the uh, batter's box. Might have been trouble with foot. <laughs> I almost said Otterbach. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Oh, he hits that oh, one. Oh, Mason Johnson, though. That was actually Cam, Cam Moyer, Moyer down there at first base, unable to make the play as it was in and out of his glove. Just bounced right back out, yeah. And Koblenz is on with a one-out infield. That'll be an error, most likely, on the first baseman there. We'll see how they score it. That'll bring up Isaac Yoder. Coleman sends one down. I think I've, I thought that was in there, but just misses. 1-0 the count. Koblenz down at first base. One out. Blake Coleman comes set. Here's the pitch in the dirt, uh -oh. and it gets away from Connor Moyer, and the runner scampers on down to second base. So the Hawks. Seemingly have a runner in scoring position here with a runner at second base with one out. I'll call that a scoot. I think he scooted to second base. More I've, of a more of a I've, scoot than I've a scamper? Seen, yeah, I've seen some scampers. That was a scoot. Okay. <laughs> he had a little bit of gas on that one. And two wild pitches by Coleman to begin this count. 
from the stretch. Uh -oh. Throw down to third, got and they got oh. the runner yeah. at third on the steal attempt. For sure got him. <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't know why they took off on that one. They should have just kept that runner at second base. Now they don't have a runner on at all, and they got two down. Man, that was crazy. I good. just, you know, sometimes the small ball pays off, and sometimes you get a little too aggressive. Well, and that was you. one instance where they just got a little too aggressive, I just, feel like. That was just perfection there because he took off as fast as he could take off from second base, and, like, they threw that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he got him, Ooh, got him I thought he was in there with that one. But, yeah, yeah, you're right. Nice play down at third by the catcher. And Mason Johnson applying the tag just in time. Yeah. Rocket down to third. So, this – Pitch plays out. Oh. Yoder hits this one into center field, left center. The left fielder camps under it, makes the play, and that's the final out. So the Hawks had a runner at second base with one out, but they end up with nothing to show for it. Goodness. Still one nothing. Tiffin Calvert. We head to the bottom of the fourth. And the uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, the Highland coach is giving that blue an earful. <laughs> he was not happy about that call. But once again, we want to thank all of our sponsors for allowing us to be here today. Thanks to Shkodet Mexican Restaurant, Your Legacy Federal Credit Union, Hope in Fostoria, MST Sauce Company, Lee's Floor Covering, Linda S. Ritzler Accounting, TPC Food Service, Ewald's Furniture, BNE Barbecue, Circle H Tire, DAH Wraps, Benchwarmers Restaurant and Delivery, Feasel's Frame and Collision, First National Bank of Sycamore, Steinmetz Signs and Graphic Inc., Klaus Electric, GW's Restaurant, Simply Susan's, and Carmi's Restaurant. We are live once again here in Akron, Ohio at Canal Park. Today's broadcast presented by Shkodet Mexican Restaurant and your legacy Federal Credit Union. Folks, the folks, the, 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 <laughs> your legacy Federal Credit Union, they've been a part of this community for 70 years. They're a member-driven financial cooperative with a focus on respect and member satisfaction while caring for your financial needs if you're hunting for your next home or vehicle make your first stop at your legacy federal credit union and get pre-approved first located at 25 schaefer park drive in tiffin your community your legacy federally insured ncua mason johnson watches the first pitch from nolan yoder outside for a ball i say speaking of money in the bank here's johnson at the plate that went up high it's two and oh on johnson he fell behind johnson three and oh in the first at bat, but came back to get him out on the put out. And that was after feeding Johnson what he wanted. A lot of this uh, playing to the outside, a little bit of the batter's. Johnson smokes that one down the first base side, but it's foul. And the pitcher continuously places that ball exactly where Mason Johnson's going to hit it between first and second base, somewhere in that area. Johnson pokes that one foul. Just a little slap out there. Just got to kind of stay nice alive when, there. Nice see when they brought that one down the middle. Johnson crushes it out to that uh, sweet spot that he's known for. That's the risk you take with this. 2-2 two, two count now. 2-2. Two and two, Nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. Let's see what Yoder goes with. Swung on, fouled off at the plate. We'll come back and do it again at 2-2. Two and two. I like this matchup. Yeah, these two. <laughs> I mean, these are. They're, they're I mean, they competing right all year for Player of the Year right here, Tommy. So yeah, looking right, at each, looking right at each other in the eye for the first time. Johnson hits Johnson. this one to second. Second baseman gloves and throws it over to first for the first out. Boy, he was hustling out of the box, Tommy. He wanted to beat that one out. You could tell. Again, knowing where Johnson's, you know, able to hit it to, that's where that pitch is being delivered to. Johnson, you know, comes out of the gate. But when you're playing that shallow and you're trying to ground it there, you're going to have that out. You're not going to get Johnson on base in that situation. I can call that Connor one Connor Moyer. Yep. Am I saying he's 0 for 1? No, he's 1 and 1. He had a hit earlier. Come on, stat guys. Get your stuff right. Like, listen, this is the last game of the day. <laughs> Moyer hits that one to second. The second baseman gloves and throws to first for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up Cam Moyer. I think everybody forgot how many outs there were. <laughs> I thought the first baseman was about to run down. They were retiring the inning. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cam and Moyer now. 
was able to get on third in his first appearance. One on one today. I will give the uh, sign board people props that these are updated pictures because they got the blonde hair in the pictures. Yeah, <laughs> true. Probably just took them today when they got here. Right. <laughs> Step right over here, sir. <laughs> Oh, they gave Cam the hit. He didn't have a hit in the first. <laughs> <laughs> they right. just didn't know which Moyer yeah, brother it was. It was one of them. <laughs> one of them had the can of Chef Moyarty. Oh, that one in there for a strike. Yeah, he's definitely looking up, looking to open up a can of that Chef Moyarty, Greg, right here. As the Senecas found themselves down early, swung on and missed. Thing. It's one and two the count here, two down. Moyer on the season batted 297 with a 548 on base percentage. Ooh, and he hits yeah. that one into left field. That'll drop for a base hit. So now he's got a hit. <laughs> a little fortune telling there by the statistician. <laughs> That's a nice one there. Very well done there by Cam Moyer. He gets himself on board with a two out base hit. And how many times are you allowed to uh, bring in a courtesy runner? That would be my question. Are you allowed to do that just once or? Depends how many outs you have, isn't it? That's a good point. I need to study up on my rules of the courtesy runner. Mm -hmm. 1-0 and the count here on Blake Coleman. Yoder comes set. Here's the pitch. It's fouled straight back. One nothing. Tiffin Calvert, runner down at first base. That's Cameron Moyer. Blake Coleman at the plate, the pitcher, facing the Division Four Player of the Year, Nolan Yoder. Coleman gives a little bit of a stanky leg there as he gets ready to. The one one fouled off to the right and out of play. Beautiful facilities here. Yeah, he used to be in here. I yes, know we said that last year, but. <laughs> hey, Let's come back and do it again Saturday. Yeah, what do you think, for Greg? Sure. Like, just keep it going. <laughs> I'm all on board for that. A big shout out to Tim Stride, director of the OHSAA, for putting us up here. And the staff here at Akron Rubber Duck Stadium do a phenomenal job here. Can't thank them enough for their hospitality. Here's the 1-0. Coleman hits this one to second. Gloves and throws to first. And that's the final out here in the bottom of the fourth. Senecas get another hit, but they strand a runner. It's still 1-0 Tiffin Calvert as we head to the top of the fifth. We'll step aside, take a quick timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Federal Credit Union, your premier financial institution in Seneca County since 1952. Your community, your legacy, federally insured NCUA. You're watching right here on Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. All right, and we're back here at Canal Park here in Akron, Ohio, home of the Rubber Ducks. We are set to start the top half of the fifth inning Tiffin Calvert on top, 1-0. Blake Coleman is pitching a gem today, folks. And, you know, when I was talking with Josh Morgret from the Advertiser Tribune today, we were kind of discussing today's matchup through text message, and I said, you know, what's your thoughts today? What are you feeling? I won't tell you what he said, but I'll tell you what I said. I said, I think today is going to be Blake Coleman's day. It's going to be his day. If they're going to win today, it's because of this young man right here on the mound. Well, and he is pitching one heck of a ball game to this point. He just got to keep it up. Well, they were in the studio last night, and I tell you, Nate, one thing that I noticed is I didn't see any nerves. From no, him. that was that's very composed. Yeah. Well, I mean, Greg, you got to think. Last year, this exact time, this exact location, he's on the mound pitching against Lincoln View. He had, he was the one that they called upon in that game to pitch in that clutch situation as a freshman. As a freshman, so he's got the experience. And that's the thing is, like, a lot of times in some of these programs, 
you work your whole uh, campaign as a freshman, sophomore, junior, just to get a chance to sniff that varsity lineup to get those varsity minutes and get a chance to go to the playoffs and hear. Oh, one, the count start off here for Brady Yoder, but Blake Coleman back to the promised land, back to uh, finish the job here, so to speak. Whew, swing and a miss. Boy, he got him. He got him looking foolish on that one, Tommy. He got him out in front. Tied him up with the off speed, and it's zero two. So off speed they ain't gonna show us. Oh. Yoder skies this one into the outfield. Palm camps under it from the shortstop position and makes the play for the first out. Did Palm great calls job. that one. Yep, I was going to say doing a great job of calling that one there. And that's the senior, Nick Palm, doing his job out there, making sure everybody knows. That's what I always love about Palm is he's got so many different ways that he can affect the game. And the steadiness on the left side of that infield, Tommy, you talk about it right now, the defense right now. Just outstanding on that left side of the infield. Not saying anything about the right. That's still outstanding defensively on the right side as well. But, man, to have those two senior stalwarts there on the left side of that infield, that really, I mean, it it goes a long way to help the confidence of a young man like Blake Coleman on the mound. The sign guy must have heard you, Nate. They fixed the name up there. Oh. <laughs> Grady Monogold at the plate. That's a hard job. That's a lot of players to keep in, in order. And all the games that happen all day long. Yeah. As once again, you're watching the Division Four State Semifinal live here from Canal Park. As the winner of this game will come back to Canal Park this Saturday at 1 p.m. to play the uh, winner of that Rushi versus St. Henry game in which Rushi was Ooh. able to dispatch St. Henry and secure their spot in the state championship Calvert looking to do the same here with a one nothing lead on the on Highland. Two and one the count here on Grady Monogold as he steps out of the box. Calls time. Now steps back in. Coleman comes set. Here's the two one. Right down the in middle. In there for a strike, and that's strike two. I think the umpire might have lost count. <laughs> what yeah, yeah, <laughs> How many strikes he had? Because he went with the strike three call, and oh, yeah. it's nope, it's 2-2. Two, two. I just saw it on the video screen here that I'm watching. And it is swung on and hit nice. up the oh. middle into center field for a base hit. So Monogold says, not so fast. And what a way to place that one. So right over the head of Godfrey there, just a little, just a little too tall for him to get that one. So there is just one out, even though the scoreboard says two. <laughs> they counted that as a strikeout down there, Greg. Let's just, let's just go with what the scoreboard says. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm with you, 100%. Now the Hawks have a runner on first as Kaufman makes his way up to the plate. Kaufman skies this one down the right field line. This one's going to be trouble over to the first baseman and Moyer. Throws it over to first. They that double guy, up the runner. Him. He, he had no idea there was two wow. outs. He didn't know. He thought that was the final out because the scoreboard oh said goodness. two outs. Yeah. Wow. 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 That is big time Gaff base running yeah. gaff right there. Wow. I can't believe that. Yeah, they got the guy coming down to first and the guy that took off from first place came back. There was only one out. Yeah. The scoreboard wow. had it wrong because they rung him up as a strikeout. Oh so they goodness. never tagged back on first, and they got that double out. Yeah, that wow. Was, that, was, that was something to behold there. Oh. I can't believe. What a way to retire the inning, especially Whew. after Coleman starting to get in a precarious position there as uh, the Hawks started to get some players on yeah. base. But, man, what a gap. Yeah, you don't see that every day. No, sure. not <laughs> at all. And that was uh, – there was a, that was a multi-level gaff because it was a scoreboard gaff oh. as well as a base running gaff. So, oh, I mean, boy, you got to feel for these. That, I mean, if you're a Highland Hawk fan, that one had to be frustrating, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody's watching the same game, so you, that's pay, right. you better be you paying attention. you got to be aware. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Always, Absolutely. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm always aware. I'm just saying. Yeah. You're out there on the field. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The awareness out there, you know, even that's why you continuously run to the base. You run through it. You run past it. That's right. Because you, you can't leave it to chance. And the Hawks left it to chance there. Calvert was able to secure a quick bang-bang. 
to end the uh, top of the fifth there. I said just, I, I can't believe it. one nothing, Tiffin Calvert. We get ready to start the bottom half of the fifth. Today's broadcast presented by Chicadette Mexican Restaurant and your legacy Federal Credit Union. Leading off for the Senecas, Harrison Schultz. Nolan Yoder on for his fifth inning of work now. Schultz had that huge sack fly earlier on to help put the Senecas on top. One he called that here. a strike, but they put it up as a ball on the board. We'll see if they correct it here. Yeah, it's 0-2. And that went inside, and it's now one and two the count. Yeah, see, I, I'm following the ump. I'm not following that scoreboard. <laughs> we know better after that last yeah, gap. Right. <laughs> and that went in the dirt, and now it is two and two. <laughs> he's trying. He's it's trying. Yeah, he's still going with three and one. There we go. Now he's switching it. There up. it there is. It two is. and two the count. And Schultz hits this oh, one into it left field. It's going to get down. It'll get down for a base hit. Harrison Schultz on board with a leadoff single. He ropes the 2-2 pitch into left center field. And I'll tell you what, Tommy, the magic man already with a sack fly. Now he's on board with a leadoff single. Yeah, what a way to start the, uh, start the bottom of this fifth inning for the Senecas. You get a guy on base trying to... Trying to open up the scoring a little bit. Yeah, able to lead this one, one nothing. Time to get some more things going as you're about two innings away. That's right. First pitch inside to Jacob Kidwell. Kidwell is 0 for 1 today. <laughs> Schultz down at first base. Second pitch high and outside to Kidwell. It's 2 and 0 the count. I like the, the way these. Uh, Seneca's approach to batter's box kids these days, it's it's just very interesting to know. Mm -hmm. Just the way your foot placement. That one in there for a strike to Kidwell. It's two and one. Yeah, the open yourself, stance. Yep, getting yourself comfortable in there. It's just. That front foot being so far open, so far back. It's almost like a major's approach as uh, mm -hmm. you don't get paid for uh, it. Infield singles. <laughs> exactly. Seneca's trying to control with huge hits. Kidwell squares to bunt and fouls that one back. It's two and two. I definitely don't like to play on top of the ball. Got a few new sponsors that we've added to the list here today, but one that's been consistently with us throughout the playoffs is Hope and Faustoria, folks. I'll tell you about their event coming up here after this pitch. It's two and two. Here's the pitch to Kidwell inside. It's now a full count. This weekend, lace up your shoes. Join us for a cause that truly makes the difference. The Walk for Recovery is coming to Hedges Boyer Park in Tiffin, supporting Hope and Faustoria. Yoder comes set. Here's the 3 2 to Kidwell, fouled off. Walk alongside us as we raise awareness and funds for addiction recovery. Mark your calendar for this Saturday and be a part of the positive change. Together, we can make a lasting impact. Join the Walk for Recovery at Hedges Boyer Park. Visit HopeAndFaustoria.com for more information. Let's step forward and bring hope to those who need it most. Yoder comes set. Here's the pitch, and it misses. Kidwell draws the walk. And the Senecas have runners at first and second. Still nobody out here. Bottom of the fifth. And they're starting to work the count once again on Nolan Yoder. As Tommy, the first two innings, they really worked the count on this kid. Yeah. Then the third and the fourth, they kind of settled in a little bit, got comfortable with that lead. Now here, bottom of the fifth, you see them starting to work that count a little bit more. Well, and again, uh, you know, we're down at the bottom of the fifth inning. But it's been some work. By Yoder, thus in this game. That pitch count starting to mount for the young man. Ooh. Otterbacher squares the bunt and pops it straight up and back into the stands. Nicely done it's by the young man in the red <laughs> over there. Caught, caught by Hillsdale fans. The count isn't out. <laughs> Hillsdale? Where are we at? Oh, sorry. Hillsdale. My bad. My bad. We're a year ago. That's where we're at. <laughs> 
Coach Go Hawks, Coleman yeah. again. This is where the Seneca's become dangerous. So meticulous with their uh, play between the bases. Bunt down the first baseline. They're going to go to third. They're safe. Everybody's safe. Why did they go to third in that situation? I don't know why you go for the lead runner there. Just go get your guy at first. He was right there. Way to beat the throw, too. Wow. What a play. Either way, you can make that play up from second. Yeah. Yeah. Go over to first, try to throw it back over to third. But, yeah, kind of you make that decision. You've seen the – Highland Hawks kind of crouch up, kind of come in its circle, and it backfired as now the Seneca's got bases loaded with the guy you don't want to be up, Nick Palm. And I'll tell you, Tommy, he's got to have a giant chip on his shoulder so far today as he started out 0-2 on the day. Huge play in the outfield earlier in the last inning, now trying to make his way, trying to get himself going offensively. And he clips the outside corner with that one. It's quickly 0-2 on Palm. And Yoder is just, it has not been Palm's day against Yoder. Sat down twice. Here's the 0-2. Misses high. 1-2 and two the count. Catcher didn't like that one. <laughs> the way he whipped that one back to the pitcher, you could tell he wasn't happy. You slip Dawn past the rooster quicker than you will Nick Palm. And the one-two fouled straight back. With a bad pitch is again. Nick Palm looking for one of those clutch hits brought to you by Circle H Tire. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Here's the one-two to Palm. Up high, and it's even now this at two and two. Whew. Is I Palm? You talk about Bamo, breathe and move on. The kind of the mo- the motto for these Senecas. Now that was last year. You could get a little bit excited there for uh, outside, and he's three and two now on shit. Palm after Palm. he was down zero oh and two. Palm can get a little bit overzealous there. Remaining calm, allowing that count to build. At start this one, oh two, Nate. Here's Here a three go. two, swung on, fouled back. We'll come back and do it again at three and two. No, this that, is that. such a pivotal <laughs> pitch. <laughs> Fouls that one, takes a strike at it, or takes a swing at it. Now here's a chance. Do you just bring the heat? Do you just throw it down the middle and try to? I'd go off speed if I was Yoder here. Palm fouls this one off. Two good pitches. Just a little bit behind that one. What do you do, Nate? I think you've had him. He's got the timing on the fastball. Try to get him with the off speed here. That would be my call, though. And he got him once again, came at him with the fastball, and Palm fouls it off at 79 miles an hour. <laughs> Big time at bat here this from is, Nick this Palm. This is a big time moment in the game. Wow. Yeah. A huge, huge moment. Seneca's leading one nothing. Base is loaded. Nobody out. 3-2 count. Here's the pitch to Nick Palm. Swung on, hit into left center field, and charging as a left fielder. He'll squeeze it, and the throw is going to be cut off, and all the runners will stay. So no tag. For the runner down at third, everybody stays home, and it's still bases loaded, but now with one out for A.J. Shoemaker. Well, that's the thing. Is Palm sent that one out to left field, but it kind of kind of got caught up and just floated back something? down to earth. Did you see him say something to Shoemaker as he went by him? I think he might have saw something in the attack or in the approach for Yoder. And he's telling Shoemaker, hey, this is what you need to look for. Shoemaker goes down looking the first two times he's up. And that comes with that senior leadership. Passing on that information to Young Johnson. Swing, rounds this one up the middle. To, first, to second for one, the relay to first. Double play! The Hawks get out of a bases loaded, wow. nobody out jam and give up no runs. What? Wow. Way to battle back and battle out. 
Big time situation right there. And Nolan Yoder worked himself through it. We'll step aside, take a quick time out. We'll come back after this. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Betting happens as fast as sports and now every play is faster than ever before. You're on the edge of your seat until the moment when it's all on the line, which is why it's important to pause before you play. Sports are fast, betting shouldn't be, so remember to set limits, know the risks, and pause before you play. To learn more, visit pausebeforeyouplay.org. Brought to you by Hope and Fostoria and the Carsa Coalition of Seneca County. You're watching right here on Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. All right, and we're back here at Canal Park in Akron, Ohio. We get set to start the top half of the sixth inning. It's 1-0 Tiffin Calvert, Nate Mullins, and Tommy Hall on the call with you here today. Greg Kinn, the wizard on the ones and twos. And Austin Rodriguez on the camera here for us. Thanks for tuning in. Today's broadcast presented by Chicotet Mexican Restaurant and your legacy Federal Credit Union. Let's take a moment to thank all of our title sponsors here today. Our pregame show brought to you by Ewald's Furniture, where you caught the coach's interview. If you didn't get a chance, hopefully you catch the broadcast later on today. Uh, also, our weather report today brought to you by TPC Food Service. Keys to the game brought to you by Chicotet Mexican Restaurant. And our first pitch brought to you by Hope and Fostoria. First pitch here in the top half of the sixth is in there for a strike to Connor Beachy. Back to the bottom of the order. That one just kind of sailed back down. Off speed, drops in there for a strike. As I told Blake Coleman last night, he's got to get that curveball working for him today if he wants to be successful. And so far, it's been working. One and one the count here on Beachy. Coleman steps off. Also want to thank our announcer cam sponsor, Lee's Floor Covering, our player of the game, brought to you by MST Sauce Company. Calls to the bullpen tonight, brought to you by Benchwarmers Restaurant and Delivery. Coleman bounces that pitch in there for a ball. It's 2-1 and one the count now. Stick around for the postgame show, brought to you by your legacy federal credit union. Our Sky Cam tonight, brought to you by Linda S. Ritzler Accounting. Bringing the smoke, brought to you by BNE Barbecue. Covering the bases, brought to you by DAH Wraps. And that one fouled off and to the right. It'll even the count at two and two on Connor Beachy. And our clutch hits today brought to you by Circle H Tire. Of course, Circle H Tire, one of our new sponsors added for today's broadcast. Are you tired of settling for ordinary tires? Well, look no further than Circle H Tire, your premier tire destination in Tiffin. With an extension selection, uh, extensive selection of top-quality brands and unbeatable prices, that one fouled off to the right, Circle H Tire is your one-stop shop for all of your tire needs. Whether it's for your car, truck, SUV, or even farm machinery, their friendly experts will find the perfect fit. Visit Circle H Tire today at 130 Melmore Street in Tiffin, Ohio. Open Monday through Saturday every week. Call 419-447-4683 to get you moving in the right direction. Drive with confidence. Choose Circle H Tire. Look Beachy hits this one into left field, right to the center fielder, Caden Otterbacher, who cruises over to make the out. And we got an out recorded in the top of the sixth inning here. I wonder how much it would cost for... Circle Eight's tired to be the sponsor of this rubber duck stadium. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about that one. I think Goodyear's got that one locked down. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Circle Eight is a place to go, man. Like, well, I know they got some Goodyear tires there for sure. I'll tell you this much: if you got a uh, three-wheeled motorcycle and some places don't want to touch it because they're weird, they'll they'll hook you up with changing your tires. Right? They'll help you out. <laughs> <laughs> Blake Coleman comes set. Here's the 1-0 to Alec Weaver. That one misses low. It's 2-0 on Weaver. Back to the top of the order for the Hawks now. Weaver the shortstop, 0-2 on the day. And not sure I what. I think that was a ball. Yeah, I'm not sure. 
how, where that one was. Catcher but held that one for a minute. He's like, you sure? Look at yeah. where, where I caught it at. <laughs> three and zero the count here on Weaver. Coleman comes set. Here's the three zero. That one in there for a strike. Looked like pretty much the same pitch as the last one, but hey, we'll <laughs> roll with the blue. He had a better angle at it than I did. So, and Coleman now trying to uh, get command of that pitch again. The three one. Slapped into center field. Otterbacher racing in. Makes the diving catch. Wow. What a catch. Wow. Wow. What an incredible catch by Caden Otterbacher as he dove in head first to make that play, Tommy. And I've noticed the Hawks, you know, as the uh, as as uh, Coleman's pitch starts to come down, you see these you see these Hawks kind of leaning in early to try to get that while it's still up there at that mid-level before it drops down. And that usually just sends that kind of popping up in the air. Smoked oh. in between short and third base, and that's a base hit for Cody Yoder. And that aggressive approach starting to pay dividends for the uh, <laughs> Hawks. The players running clear out in the outfield there. <laughs> <laughs> you got extra outfielder for Calvert from the other team. Yeah, that was just a nice line drive hit there right between everybody. I think they're getting a little bullpen session in. There might be some warm-ups here going, uh, maybe. You might be right. Coleman snap throw over to first. Ooh, Runner back ooh, safely. That ooh, 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 that was close. <laughs> Nolan Yoder at the plate. Blake Coleman on the mound. one nothing Calvert. Here's the pitch. Up high. Blake Coleman, sixth inning of work now. Two down, runner at first. Throw over to first and safe. Wow. wow. That was really close. Very close over there at first base. They caught him leaning, though. He was ready to run. Yeah. He was off on that pitch. Yeah. I know he was going to leave on that pitch. And he did a good job of throwing that one like to the inside of the base there, so he leaned into it to like try to tag him out. That was a close one. Whew. <laughs> One and all the count. Here's the pitch. Up high. Two and oh on Nolan Yoder. Blake Coleman. He said he's been working the hardest on the mental aspect of the game over the offseason. Swing and a miss. Throws it by Nolan Yoder. And it's two and one. I don't know. I don't know if you can ever get a mastery of the mental aspect right. of this game is it's definitely a game especially as a pitcher that can it doesn't the game doesn't always love you back yoder fouls this one straight up the elevator shaft is it going to be playable for the catcher yeah, connor moyer goes over and wow. makes the play wow. in foul ground over by the on deck that, circle man. of the hawks man yeah, wow. If that one was any further, he was, was hitting the net and riding it down. I can't believe he got underneath of that. And what a pivotal out that was because you had the D4 player of the year at the plate. You had to squeeze that because you don't want to give him another opportunity. Huge out for Tiffin Calvert right there. Beautiful. And we head to the bottom of the sixth. It's still one nothing. Tiffin Calvert. We'll keep it right here. We'll thank our sponsors for bringing you today's ball game right here on Heart of Ohio Sports. Thanks to Shkadet Mexican Restaurant and your Legacy Federal Credit Union, our presenting sponsors here today. We also want to thank Hope and Faustoria, MST Sauce Company, Lease Floor Covering, Linda S. Ritzler Accounting, TPC Food Service, Ewald's Furniture, BNE Barbecue, Circle H Tire, DAH Wraps, Benchwarmers Restaurant and Delivery, Fiesel's, Fiesel's Frame and Collision, First National Bank of Sycamore, Steinmetz Signs and Graphic Inc., Klaus Electric, GW's Restaurant, Simply Susan's, and Carmi's Restaurant. All proud sponsors with us here on Heart of Ohio Sports. Of course, Benchwarmers is our call to the bullpen sponsor here tonight. And it looks like they've made a pitching change here, Tommy, as uh, they've made a call to the bullpen here. And number 44 on the mound so Nolan Yoder's day is done. Isaac Yoder takes over from center field. We talked about that pitch count starting to add up. And Yoder moves Yoder. over to shortstop. That's Nolan Yoder. 
But yeah, his pitch count had to be creeping up past close to 100 pitches by now. So if it hasn't already crossed that threshold. But once again, bench warmers are called to the bullpen sponsor. Are you craving delicious food right at your doorstep? Look no further than Bench Warmers Restaurant and Delivery. Satisfy your taste buds with their mouth-watering menu featuring juicy burgers, crispy wings, and fresh cut fries. Whether you're dining in or enjoying the convenience of delivery, Bench Warmers has got you covered. Taste the flavor. Feel the excitement. Visit Bench Warmers today or order by calling 567-268-9268 for a slam dunk, for a slam dunk experience. Bench Warmers Restaurant and Delivery, eat like a champion. First one there sails real close to Johnson. Yeah, they're pitching the outside on Johnson <laughs> throughout the first uh, six innings. That one misses. 2-0 and the count now on Mason Johnson. As we mentioned, Isaac Yoder on the mound now for the Highland Hawks. Nolan Yoder's day is done after five innings of work. Yeah. <sighs> Johnson hits this one down the first baseline, and first baseman makes the play as he throws it over to the pitcher covering. And the first out is recorded here in the bottom of the sixth. one nothing. Tiffin Calvert. Four, Connor, Moyer. Connor Moyer strolls to the plate now for the Senecas. He is one for two on the day. That one in there for a strike. On Moyer. Again, you want to keep active in this in this bottom of the sixth inning if you're Calvert. You want to continue to try to open up that lead. You know, one you're clutching at pearls really with a one run lead. If you're able to get things uh going and get things opened up, puts you in a lot better situation going into that seventh inning. Moyer checks his swing and watches that one high for a ball, two and one the count. Yeah, that, that might have been just the perfect time to change pitchers here because now they had to readjust, the batters had to readjust to this new mm -hmm. pitcher and what he's throwing here. What's late in the sixth inning here? The 2 1. Moyer fouls this one up into the sweet deck. <laughs> the sweet level, I should say, here at Canal Park. Well, Greg, they tried to shove us in the media box, but uh, we said, uh, we're too sweet for that. Mm -hmm. oh. Moyer hits that one to short. Oh. Yoder has it. Eat him up. And Connor Moyer says, have you some Chef Moyardee? <laughs> Go ahead and eat that up. <laughs> Open a can of Chef Moyardee. <laughs> two for three on the day for Connor Moyer. That'll bring up Cameron Moyer, who is one for two. Oh, no, a double dose of Chef Moyardee. Mm, Another mm, helping. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. A little overstuffed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a runner at first now. Change the runner out at first. There. John Schumacher coming in to run for Connor Moyer. As big Cameron Moyer strolls to the plate. Calls time. Seneca's used that wristband play call system. I was going to say something in the works here for the Seneca's. Mm -hmm. Very pivotal inning. Schumacher down at first, one out. Moyer Calvert. watches that one in there for a strike. one nothing. Tiffin Calvert here in the bottom of the sixth. Looking for something, looking to, for something to swing at because, again, nine times out of ten, Moyer would have taken a swing at that one. That was a well-placed ball. Here's the 1-0. Just misses with that one. I'm sorry, it's... Was the scoreboard wrong or is the ump wrong? <laughs> Let's see. Throw over to first. Runner dives back safely. Feel that breeze coming in the door? Yes, here? I do. It's, it's like getting a little chitty willy. 64 right now. Yeah, there's your weather report brought to you by TPC Food Service. 64 and overcast. Uh, the sun's going down. The lights have been on for a minute now. <clears throat> mm hmm. Playing under the lights here at Canal Park. Beautiful facility here in downtown Akron, Ohio. Yoder sends that one with some heat 84 miles an hour down the middle. Ooh. A little wild with it, though. 
Two one the count. Here's the two one. Strong oh. on and missed. And it's two and two on Moyer. One out, runner down at first base. Cameron Moyer at the plate. Isaac Yoder. From the stretch, here's the 2-2. Two -two. Up high, and it's a full count now on Cameron Moyer. <laughs> Ooh. That looked pretty high to me. I don't know. It is what it is. It's just funny hearing the whole crowd there yeah. on that side of the stadium go. Ooh. Full count. Here's the 3-2. In there, strike three called. Wow. And he thought it was... Yeah, he thought he was walking there. And the runner steals from first to second base. So John Schumacher will be down there at second base, but two outs here for Blake Coleman. Coleman is one for one on the day today. He drew a walk, and he scored a run. The game's only run was scored by the pitcher. So, hey, he's doing his job. <laughs> this young man's having himself a ball game today. Coleman hits that one to the second baseman. Gloves and throws to first. And we head to the top of the seventh inning where the Hawks are down to their final three outs here. They need to make something happen. And the Senecas need to close it down here to move on. So they can play Saturday night, or Saturday right here at Canal Park. We'll step aside, take a quick timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Why go to Lee's Floor Covering of Tiffin? Why not just go to one of those big box DIY stores? Because at Lee's Floor Covering, they know that selecting the right flooring for your home can be overwhelming. They make choosing the right items for your home simple. At Lee's Floor Covering, they have one of the largest selections of floor covering in Northwest Ohio, and they make the decision-making process easy. Stop in and see what everyone raves about at Lee's Floor Covering in Tiffin. You're watching right here on Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. All right, and we're back here at Canal Park, Akron, Rubber Duck Stadium. Nate Mullins and Tommy Hall on the call with you. You are watching the Sky Cam brought to you by Linda S. Ritzler Accounting. Folks, don't, tr don't just trust your finances to just anyone. Go to the pros at Linda S. Ritzler Accounting. Serving customers and small business owners located in and around the Tiffin area, Linda S. Ritzler Accounting is here to help with all of your financial needs. Their dedicated staff can help you with tax preparation services, consulting, business planning, and auditing. Call Linda S. Ritzler Accounting at 419-447-6413 to set up your consultation and get back to running your business. A huge inning top of the seventh here for the Highland Hawks here Blake Coleman on the mound as a sophomore after his freshman comp campaign came to a close in the state semifinal one year ago looking to close one out here and get to the state championship and Colin Koblenz leading off for the Hawks watches be, that one inside could be three outs away here Nate Here's the 1-0 from Coleman. Swung on, hit into right field, and the right fielder there to make the play, A.J. Shoemaker, and no, he dropped it. Did he? Oh. He dropped the ball. I'm not sure what happened. Now they're yelling about him being out of the baseline here, so what? Yeah, the umpires need to make a play. need to make a call here. I'm not sure what the call is, but they need to make a conference here. You're going to have to talk things over because I don't know what exactly happened there, Greg. Did he make the catch and then he, drop it? He must have because it looked like he made the I catch. Because I thought he made the catch and then went to transfer to his hand for the throw in. Did they just call him safe? And they called him safe. So the Hawks have a leadoff base runner here in the top of the seventh for Isaac Yoder. And now Matt Coleman wants to come out and talk things over. He's like, hey. This is what I saw. What'd you see? And Blue's letting him know, hey, this is what I saw. Coleman saying, hey, he, he dropped it on the transfer. He caught it, and then on the transfer to his hand, he dropped it. 
I know he had the ball. Now he's making the argument, did he get outside the baseline? Because the umpire is not hearing the argument of the, oh, he dropped the ball on the transfer. He's like, yeah, we dropped the ball. Now Coleman's trying to make the argument, well, he was outside the baseline when he went past first base. Either way, Coleman comes out and he says, let's get fired up, guys. Come on. So head coach Matt Coleman comes out onto the, on, onto the mound and onto the diamond, states his case, but he's going to have to retreat back to the dugout here. Nobody out. Runner down at first base. Isaac Yoder at the plate. Blake Coleman on the mound. Coleman comes set from the stretch. Here's the pitch. Squares to bunt. Throw down to first. Oh, he's oh, wow. safe. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I how. don't even think that was close. But, yeah, they're going to say he was safe. He rushed him. Oh, my goodness. Whoo! Wow. wow. And now Coleman's once again out of the dugout to go talk to the umpire because he's saying, I thought I saw him get out there too. A lot of dramatic tension here in this top half of the seventh inning. Every pitch, every thing from here on out becomes so crucial. Blake you Coleman. Run away from your season ending. Here's the, the pitch. Squares to bunt. Coleman comes off the mound. Throws to first, and they get the runner at first. Whoo! High throw from Coleman, but Cameron Moyer luckily is about 6'3". Wow. He got up there and uh, oh, went up there jump. and got it. Yeah, that <laughs> Showed off some hops there, buddy. <laughs> He's, I might be a big man, but I can get up there and get it. Well, here's the thing, though. You move a guy over to second, getting a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. So a runner down at second base, one out for Brady Yoder. Coleman comes set. Pitch to Yoder is inside. He's feeling it. He is in the zone right now. We'll see here. Coleman now. Laser focused. The 1-0 in there for a strike. Nice. And it's 1-1 one and one the count here on Yoder. That one up high. Try to get him to chase that high off speed. It's two and one on Yoder. Colin Koblenz down at second base. That one in there for a strike. It is two and two on Brady Yoder. Earlier approach by Yoder. Should have just took the cut at that one. Blake Coleman comes set. Here's the 2-2. Swing and a miss! Ooh, Out number two. Two down for the Hawks. And the Hawks down to their final out potentially. Monogold going to come up to the plate with a runner at second. Down one nothing. Here at the top of the seventh. Grady Monogold is two for two on the day, so he... If anybody in this lineup's got Blake Coleman's number, it's Monogold right here. He's looking to make some contact. The first one is up high for a ball. That's also the thing you got to take into account. You're not just going to hack at this one to try to pop it up. You got to time called. Monogold wants to think this one over a little bit. Once again, don't forget to stick around for the post-game show brought to you by your legacy Federal Credit Union. That one in there for a strike. There you go. Coleman gets the off-speed in there on the outside corner. I don't feel safe until I see that ump's uh, signal, and he's taking his time there. <laughs> yeah. 
One and one the count. Runner at second base. One nothing Calvert. Two down. Top of the seventh. Here's the pitch. Swung on. Hit to short. Palm. It's through the infield. Otterbacher with the throw to the plate. The throw that not in time. Oh, my goodness. And the game is tied at one apiece. Grady Monogold once again coming through with a clutch hit for the Hawks. And it is tied at one apiece here in the top of the seventh. What and that's going to do it. Moment. Most likely for Blake Coleman. What a hit. As his day will be done here. What an outstanding ball game he has pitched to this point. He was, he was just one out away from sending his team to the state finals. But instead, the Hawks stay alive. And it's a 1-1 ball game with two down here in the top of the seventh. We'll have a pinch hitter here as Caden Koblenz comes in for the Hawks. And a pinch runner, Logan Yoder. They have another Yoder. There's five Yoders on this team. <laughs> and Logan Yoder comes in at second base as a pinch runner. Got a couple new sponsors, including one of them here, Ewald's Furniture. Are you ready to transform your home into a cozy haven? Look no further than Ewald's Furniture, your one-stop destination for all things stylish and comfortable. Whether you're furnishing your living room, dining area, or bedroom, they have it all. Don't settle for less when it comes to your home's comfort. Visit Ewald's Furniture in Tiffin, Ohio today, located at 2491 State Route 100 in Tiffin, serving the Tiffin community for 123 years and counting. Looks like Coleman will stay on the yeah, mound. Yeah, stayed on the mound. Oh, so Instead of this one out. He's earned the opportunity to finish this one out here. And he hits the batter. So the first pitch from Coleman hits the batter, Cope Lentz. And now we got runners at first and second with two down. As Connor Beachy strolls to the plate, he is 0 for 2 on the day. Big lead down at second base. He bit. Here's the pitch from Coleman. That one in there for a strike. Starts him out with a fastball. 0-1 the count on Beachy. Two down, runners at first and second. 1-1 one, one tie here in the top of the seventh. The state semifinal matchup. Tiffin Calvert and Highland. Owen won the count here on Beachy. Blake Coleman comes set. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled back into the stands, and we'll do it again at 0-2. Nate Mullins on the call with you today with Tommy Hall. Greg Kinn, the wizard, on the ones and twos. Austin Rodriguez on the camera. Connor Beachy at the plate. Facing an 0-2 count. Here's Coleman. Here's the pitch. Beachy hits this one into center field, and Otterbacher looks to be playable, and he makes the play for the final out. So it's tied at one apiece. We head to the bottom of the seventh. And Tiffin Calvert with an opportunity here to send themselves into the state final here at Canal Park. And what a job by Highland to rally going to the bottom of the seventh here. Absolutely. They were down to the final out. That, that hit, I mean, perfectly placed on the field where it was just, just far enough out to give him just enough time to get home because that was a close one. Yeah, <laughs> that really the was. The throw got there just, just a second too late. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Today's broadcast presented by Shkadet Mexican Restaurant and your legacy Federal Credit Union. We'll take a moment and thank all of our sponsors, including Hope and Fostoria, MST Sauce Company, Lee's Floor Covering, Linda S. Ritzler Accounting, TPC Food Service, Ewald's Furniture, BNE Barbecue, Circle H Tire, DAH Wraps, Benchwarmers Restaurant and Delivery, Fiesel's Frame and Collision, First National Bank of Sycamore, Steinmetz Signs and Graphic Inc., Klaus Electric, GW's Restaurant, Simply Susan's and Carmi's Restaurant, all proud sponsors with us here on Heart of Ohio Sports. I'll tell you about another one of our sponsors here. They've been with us here in the postseason here for the last few weeks. TPC Food Service, 
Pleasure to have them back on board with us. For 75 years, TPC Food Service in Tiffin, Ohio has been providing quality product and service to food service operators in Northwest Ohio and the surrounding areas. Family owned in Ohio Proud, contact them toll free at 800-342-0477 today. TPC Food Service, big enough to serve you, small enough to care. When we get ready to start the bottom of the seventh inning, tied at one apiece here in the state semifinals. Highland. Due up for Tiffin Calvert, the seven, eight, and nine hitters, Harrison Schultz, Jacob Kidwell, and Caden Otterbacher. Schultz watches that first one in there for a strike. That one upstairs, one and one the count now. Isaac Yoder on for his second inning of work now. Here's the pitch to Schultz, grounded to third. Third baseman gloves it, throws it over to first for the first out. Man, Brady Yoder's so good. He really is. All these kids look like ball players, like every single one of them. You can't take a breath at any spot in this lineup. Oh, Hawks two outs away from sending this one to extra innings. First pitch sails right down the middle. Kidwell watches that one in there for a strike. You got to figure if you're uh, the Senecas, as Kidwell watches that Another second one. pitch one in there for a strike. You got to figure if you're the Senecas, if you're not able to score here, I think Blake Coleman's day is most likely done. On the mound anyways, as Kidwell swings and misses at that one. Oh. Actually, I think it was foul-tipped into the catcher's glove, but he did catch it for the out. Second out of the inning. That'll bring up Caden Otterbacher. Boy, he had a game-winning hit against Hillsdale last year. But wouldn't it be nice to see him send one into the seats over there in left field? As he watches that one in there for a strike. Yoder wasting no time. Second pitch misses. 85. Yeah, he's bringing it. Bringing the smoke. Brought to you by B&E Barbecue. Otterbacher fouls that one back, and it's one and two now. Another 84 mile an hour pitch. Yeah, he's not playing around with hitters either. He's coming right after him. Here's the one-two. Up high. And it's now two and two on Otterbacher. Two down. One one tie here in the bottom of the seventh. Here's the pitch. Otterbacher's chopper down the third baseline. It's gonna stay Look fair! And Otterbacher beats it down the line. What a softly hit chopper down the line, but it just stays fair, Tommy. It looks like a golf hit or something, the way it rolled, just rolled down the, <laughs> down the third baseline there. Wow. So the Senecas have a two-out base runner, and that's Caden Otterbacher. Yeah, and you always got to be so careful how you feel that because you don't know what the uh, speed of that ball is as it uh, starts to uh, make its roll. That one just kind of slowed down there, and like Greg, you talked about, it looked like it was. Uh, Palm hits that one back up the middle into the outfield for a base hit. hit. And the Senecas have runners at first and second base. Two down. Seneca's starting to square up on Yoder now. As that'll bring up A.J. Shoemaker. He is 0 for 3 on the day today. And I think we're going to get a pinch runner here. Courtesy runner for Caden Otterbacher most likely. Otterbacher's going to come off. Maybe. Oh, there's players. Oh, Mason's the on decks. He's he's warming up to be the pitcher. So he was in the bullpen. The yeah, yeah. So he was warming up in the bullpen. So they had to time the game and call timeout so the pitcher could come because he's in the on deck circle. <laughs> he's due up next to bat. Yeah, he had to come back over here so he could be up. Yeah. <laughs> Two outs, 
First pitch to Shoemaker is in the dirt. Runners at first and second. Tied at one apiece here in the state semifinal matchup between Tiffin Calvert and Highland. Here's the 1-0 from Yoder. Oh, that one misses. No, misses. Yeah. What? And it's 2-0 on A.J. Shoemaker. I don't know if Yoder agreed with that one. I don't know if any of us agreed with that one. That was a <laughs> nice place ball. Here's the 2-0. And it hits him, Shoemaker. No, he's saying he stepped into it. Oh, jeez. I am so sick of this. Wow. Like, I am so sick of this. Why do they have to move? Why do they have to move out of the way? It's not like he moved into it. He just didn't move out of the way. Why is that his fault? Oh, my goodness. I don't understand that call. I've never understood it. Like, if he's standing there, Isn't that what that's not where is? you're supposed to pitch it. <laughs> is that not what getting hit by the ball is? That you're standing where you're supposed to be and the ball hits you? Well, he didn't make an attempt to move out of the way. That is just an awful... I know that that's the call for the umpire to make. And honestly, he made the right call. But I don't like that call in the game. Like, I don't like that call. I wish that call didn't exist is what I'm saying. I wish he didn't have that in his back pocket to make. Because that's a judgment call on the umpire. That's a hard call for him to make. Well, the other thing you got to judge with that is uh, the situation. Absolutely. You don't want batters crowding the plate, especially when you got two on and you're trying to load the bases up. Here's a 3-0, and that one bunted foul. But it gets a runner on. What? No, it was bunted, so it oh. went foul. <laughs> I didn't even see him hit it. No, I hurt. Yeah, you got a yeah, and the, the umpire even went with that with his hand. Which means he hit it. He got a piece of it. So it's a 3-1 count. Two outs. Runners at first and second. A.J. Shoemaker at the plate. I just thought this one sent past you now. Everything's thrown in chaos. The 3-1 swung on and missed. Two down. 3-2 count to A.J. Shoemaker here. Well, there was your gimme. Make or break time here. First and second. For Shoemaker. Two down. 3-2 count. Here's the pitch. And he missed. Ball four. The bases wow. are loaded you for see, Mason Johnson. You see, the, they started to head in. They thought that was they a strike. They did. They all thought that was a strike. The center fielder was already at second base. Wow. He's ready to start throwing his glove up in the air. Yeah. Wow. Close pitch. Well, bases loaded, two down. Oh. Mason Johnson at the plate, tied at one apiece. Johnson fouls it straight back. Wow. The big Johnson <laughs> 0 for 3 on the day today. If there was ever a time to be the big Johnson. That's right. <laughs> we'll see here in the senior campaign, Mason Johnson. He just needs to poke one somewhere. And that one softly hit to first. The first baseman makes the play, and that is the final out in the bottom of the seventh. All right, folks, extra innings. You asked for it, you got it. It's a 1-1 ball game as we head to the top of the eighth. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Federal Credit Union, your premier financial institution in Seneca County since 1952. Your community, your legacy, federally insured NCUA. You're watching right here on Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. All right, and we're back here at Canal Park in Akron, Ohio, the home of the Rubber Ducks. We set we are set to start the top half of the eighth inning, extra innings here in the state semifinal as Tiffin Calvert and Highland are tied at one apiece after the Hawks came back in the top of the seventh with a two-out 
RBI to tie it at one apiece. Wasn't there at least like one or two games that went into extra innings today here? Yes. The, well, one? the game before this one went into extras. It was a 0-0 game between uh, Rushi and uh, St. Henry, and that one went to extras before uh, Rushi ended up winning that one. Well, there's a few ways you get to this uh, moment. You either have a deep bullpen or a nice lineup, and sometimes you have a little bit of combination of both. And for the uh, for the games here played today, you've definitely seen a lot of pitching duels between squads. And this one has been none, no different. Back to the top of the order here as the Hawks' Alec Weaver leads it off. Both squads with five hits apiece here tonight. Plating one run apiece. Weaver watches that first one in the dirt for a ball. Once again, make sure you stick around for the postgame show brought to you by your legacy Federal Credit Union. We'll have our player of the game. We'll talk about the keys to the game. Player of the game brought to you by MST and our keys to the game brought to you by Shkadet Mexican Restaurant. Two and zero, the count. Here's the pitch from Coleman. That one in there for a strike to Weaver. No scoreboard. That, that was nah, the umpire called it a strike. Did he? I didn't. There it is. Hold on, sure. Okay. <laughs> Here's the two one. Swung on, hit up the middle and through the infield for a base hit, and Alec Weaver. Gets himself on board with a leadoff base hit, and that's going to be the day for Blake Coleman. I have a feeling that that's where, yep, most likely. We're going to get a call to the bullpen brought to you by Bench Warmers Restaurant and Delivery, and we're most likely going to see the end of the day for young Blake Coleman, but he pitched himself one heck of a ball game, giving up just one run, five or six hits in seven innings of work for the young sophomore. And I tell you, Tommy, you think about where he was last year, giving up those, what did he give up, six runs to uh, Lincoln View in that game in the state semi last year? The turnaround for him from last year to this year, I mean, just remarkable, like in this situation anyway. Obviously, the young man had a great season, and he was just building upon the momentum that he had gathered throughout the season. But for him today, I mean, you got to feel good about the performance you got out of your pitcher today. Absolutely. He was definitely bringing the smoke. Brought to you by BNE Barbecue. Don't forget, folks, get your pre-orders in. You can still get your pre-orders in for BNE Barbecue. This Saturday is the day for barbecue. But if you want to get ahead of the crowd, you need to place your pre-order now. They're accepting pre-orders until tomorrow at 8 o'clock. That's tomorrow, Friday, June 9th at 8 o'clock. This weekend's menu includes baby back ribs, pulled pork, chicken leg quarters and for sides they offer smoked mac and cheese smoked sausage and burnt ends get your order in now by finding them on facebook send them a message that's b n e barbecue one of our proud sponsors here on heart of ohio sports speaking of flavor are you ready for a flavor sensation that'll leave you craving for more? Well, look no further than MST Sauce Company, the pride of Tiffin, Ohio. Our, our, their handcrafted sauces are made with love, using the finest ingredients that will tantalize your taste buds. From sweet and tangy to fiery and bold, MST Sauce Company has a flavor for every palate. Visit their website at mstsaucecompany.com to order online and have it shipped anywhere around the world or swing by their downtown store in downtown Tiffin. Don't miss out on the sauce revolution. MST Sauce Company, where the flavor meets perfection. First pitch to Cody Yoder is in there for a strike as he squares to bunt. Runner down at first base with nobody out. So the Hawks looking to play small ball here and move the runner over. Top of the eighth, tied at one apiece. Mason Johnson on the mound for the Senecas. Blake Coleman moves to second. James, Jameson Godfrey at third. Johnson comes off the mound, throws to second. They get the lead runner. No, they're going to say he was off the bag. Oh, my goodness. Nick Palm does not agree with the call. He's upset. Are they allowed to have replay here? I mean... That was a really close play. I don't know. Either way, 
Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Nolan Yoder at the plate. Division four player of the year here. Johnson on the mound. Here's the pitch. Swung on. Actually, the attempt at a foul. He didn't pull that back back. No, that's what. There's no way. Yeah. That's a strike. Pitch to Johnson is outside. Or pitch from Johnson to Yoder is outside. I guess it is 2-0. Oh. No, they they fixed it now. No okay, 1-1 one one the count say, now. <laughs> there's no way he pulled that bat back. Here's the pitch from Johnson. Swung on. Actually, the bunt attempt is fouled off. And it's now one and two on Nolan Yoder. Yoder is 0 for 3 on the day today. Nobody out. Tied at one apiece. Mason Johnson comes set. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled off to the right. We'll do it again at one and two. Johnson, one of those unorthodox deliveries <laughs> as uh, he'll come at you overhand, he'll come at you from three-quarter arm slot, he even comes at you sidearm. And you just never know what's coming. That sidearm there is 76 miles an hour. And once again, his sidearm is slapped into center field. That one's going to get down for a base hit. Otterbacher up and throwing. And now the Hawks have bases loaded with nobody out. Of course, the Seneca's had bases loaded, nobody out back in the, what, fifth inning? I believe yeah. fourth or fifth inning. And they were unable to score a run. As Nolan Yoder was able to get out of the jam with no damage done. Let's see what Mason's, Mason Johnson's able to do here in this crucial situation for Tiffin Calvert, looking to keep their season alive here. Bases loaded, nobody out. Tied at one apiece. Colin Koblenz at the plate. First pitch misses outside, and it's 1-0. and Unenviable task for Mason Johnson to come into. Yeah. To start his pitching game, get into a rhythm. When you already had a runner on the bag. Now you got bases loaded. Now you're coming in, you're pitching out of the stretch right from the start. Here's the pitch. Swung on, hit into left field. It's going to get down for a base hit. Schultz up and throwing, and one run will score. And it's 2-1 to one Hawks. And the Hawks coming alive here at the end of the game to really put Calvert in a precarious position as the Hawks chased that lead for the better part of six innings. It all came down to two outs. Down in the bottom of the sixth. And the Hawks able to battle back and now takes the lead here in extra innings. Still nobody out. Bases loaded. Isaac Yoder at the plate. Squares to bunt, and this one's fouled back. That run will count against Blake Coleman, so his day is done. The book is closed on him. Two runs, eight hits allowed. I'm sorry, six hits allowed. And Mason Johnson is responsible for all three runners on base now. Pitch from Johnson up high. It's one and one now on Yoder. It is a two to one ball game now as Highland takes the lead. Nobody out, bases loaded. Johnson, here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Actually, foul tipped. Wow. It's now one and two. 
Johnson could really use a strikeout here. <laughs> I don't know what he said there, but... Uh... In the dirt, Moyer able to keep it relatively in front of him. Keeps all the runners where they're at. Two two the count. Base is loaded still with no out. Hawks with two one advantage now. Yeah, it went outside. Tried to get him to swing at a bad pitch there. And it's now a full count. Isaac Yoder showing some patience at the plate here. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Full count. Johnson comes set. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Wow. That's a nice. big strikeout for Mason Johnson. As there's now one down with the bases loaded for what, Brady Oder. What a command. In a, in a, how many times have you seen that? Wow. How many times? Crucial situation. Probably the most loaded count of this young man's career. And he just sails one down. Get that out, but still not out of the woods yet. Yoder skies this one into foul ground. Third baseman, oh, actually it. Palm, was unable to make the play as he ranged all the way over there trying to make the play. Tough angle to try to catch that one at there. Yeah, I... It was kind of no man's land. Like, Godfrey wasn't able to make the play there. He was, his back was turned to the ball. Palm racing over trying to make the play, but was just unable to get there in time. And Schultz had a long way to go to get there. So, you know, coming in with the left handed glove there at that angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you got Definitely. a statue at Blue standing behind the third plate. Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Bunted back to the mound. They go home and safe. safe. Wow. He must not have had his foot on the plate, or I don't know what happened. Maybe they scored first before the ball got to the plate. I'm it not sure. very close either way. Yeah, it was bang, bang right there at the plate. But it's now 3-1 to one Hawks. Still one down. Base is still loaded. Grady Monogold comes to the plate. And the only reason we're still here talking about this ball game and the only reason the Hawks even have a chance to be in this situation is because of this young man right here. As he put a two-out double and three for three, into right. center field and plated the game-tying run. First pitch outside from Johnson. <clears throat> 76 on the pitch clock there. One out, base is loaded. 1-0 count. Here's the pitch from Johnson. Up high. Johnson having some, having some issues locating that fastball here. As he has given up an earned run now and allowed the inherited runner to score here. That one fouled straight back by Monogold, and it's now two and one. Three to one Highland leading Tiffin Calvert here in the top of the eighth. No matter what happens, Seneca's still got an at-bat at in the bottom half here. As that one inside, and it's 3-1 and one the count now on Monogold. That situation even becomes dire the more and more you allow yourself to get buried here. 
down two runs. We only needed the one to get back in the thick of things. And now you got to get, now you got to plate two when you get your chance. And you only got. Monogold fouls that one off, and it's a full count now. Grady Monogold, three for three on the day with an RBI. That RBI, like I said, the only reason we're still here. They were down one nothing in the top of the seventh. Monogold drove home the game-tying run. And he hits that one into center field. Otterbacher charges in. He's still got a throw from center field, not in time, and they're going to score another run. So it's now 4-1 to one Highland. So they have tacked on two more insurance runs as they now lead by three with two outs here in the top of the eighth. Going to bring up Braden Kaufman, the catcher. Under the lights here at Canal Park. Owen won the count here on Kaufman. Runners at first and second, two down. Mason Johnson comes set. Here's the pitch. Up high. A lot of his fastballs have been just a little bit too high in the zone. And that one off the top of the runner of the batter's helmet. Did he check it out of the way though? <laughs> I don't even think he got down, did he? Did he even <laughs> I, duck? I, I just I'm, but, I know. <laughs> That'll bring up Connor Beachy. Bases loaded situation once again. Once again, high. High and not much speed on that one. Johnson's been the he's been the, the closer pretty much for this team on the season. The guy they call on when they need to shut things down. He came in with a runner on. And since and it was a 1-1 game when he came in with one runner on. Since then, the Hawks have hit four. They've got four base hits. Got himself a strike there. And three runs. And it's a 1-1 count here on Connor Beachy. Connor Moyer wants to come out and talk things over with his pitcher. Of course, it's a mound visit, but we'll call it a call to the bullpen brought to you by Benchwarmers Restaurant and Delivery. I'm just sad that they don't have a bench warmer here in Akron. I know. <laughs> you and me That's both, Greggy. so good right now. Swung on, hit back up the middle. Backhanded stop by Coleman. He steps on second for the final out. And that's the end of the top of the eighth. But the Hawks plate three, and they take the lead into the bottom of the eighth. And the Senecas are down to potentially their final three outs here. They need to make some magic happen. We'll keep it right here. You're locked in on Heart of Ohio Sports. Nate Mullins and Tommy Hall on the call with you. Thanks for tuning in. Today's broadcast presented by Chicadette Mexican Restaurant and your legacy Federal Credit Union. We'll take a moment and thank all of our sponsors, including Hope and Faustoria, MST Sauce Company, Lee's Floor Covering, Linda S. Ritzler Accounting, TPC Food Service, Ewald's Furniture, BNE Barbecue, 
Circle H Tire, DAH Wraps, Benchwarmers Restaurant and Delivery, Feasel's Frame and Collision, First National Bank of Sycamore, Steinmint Signs and Graphic Inc., Klaus Electric, GW's Restaurant, Simply Susan's, and Carmi's Restaurant. All proud sponsors with us here on Heart of Ohio Sports. And we can't thank them enough for all their contributions allowing us to be here at beautiful Canal Park here in Akron, Ohio, the home of the Rubber Ducks. Once again, thanks to the staff here, and Athletic Director Tim Stride, for all their hospitality. OHSAA does a phenomenal job here at the state championships. Of course, the softball state championships took place last weekend at uh, Firestone Stadium here in Akron. And here this weekend, we have the baseball championships to be played here. We had teams from Division One and Division Four today. As earlier, the D1 teams faced off, and now we have the second matchup out of the Division Four teams. Well, strap in, folks, because this is going to have to be a long bottom of the eighth inning. That's right. If the Senecas expect any chance at a at a chance to play on Saturday. Connor Moyer fouls that one straight back. Moyer is one for three on the day today. I can and see that one in there for a strike from Isaac Yoder. Already 0-2 the count. And that went up high. They try to get him to chase a bad pitch there. I think that's a scouting report on these Moyer brothers is if you get them down, they might chase a bad pitch, but most of the time they got a great eye. And they're not going to swing at your pitch. They're going to wait till you bring them their pitch. Here's the 2-2. Oh, swing and a miss. Moyer sat down. One down by the Hawks. Two away for a shot at the state championship after being able to plate three in the top of that eighth inning after battling back after being down for the majority of six innings. Can't you talk about coming down to the wire? They call that a strike. Yep. I still see the dust settling. Moyer swings at that one. And you could have a quick two down. Sword of Damocles starting to swing over the Seneca season. And it's oh. in there. Strike three call. Down the gullet. Down to the final out already. That takes away basically all your strategy, too. Yeah. You have no sack flies. You have no sacrificial plays. You have nothing at that juncture. Nobody on. Coleman swings at that one and comes up empty. I'll tell you what, this young man, Isaac Yoder, he's come in and just pitched an out, absolutely, just an absolute gem since he's come in. Oh, yeah. yeah. You want to talk about closing out. That's that's exactly what Yoder's done here in this Division Four state semifinal. In there uh, for a strike. It's strike. one and two. Seneca's down to their final strike here. Here it is, a pitch away potentially from closing the books. That went up high. It's two and two now on Coleman. Two down, 4-1 your score. Highland on top here in the bottom of the eighth. Here's the pitch from Yoder. Swing and a miss. That's the ball game. The Senecas lose in extra innings here in Akron to the Highland Hawks. After Highland chased the Senecas for six innings, one run wasn't going to be enough as this Highland able to uh, – Get out of a precarious position 
take this one to extra innings. Plated three in that eighth inning and then just mowed down the Senecas here at the bottom of the eighth to close this one out and punch their ticket to the state championship. Played this Saturday at 1 o'clock against Rushi. But, man, uh, tremendous season by the Senecas. Coming into tonight, 30-2. and two. Back to the state semifinal, and it ends for the Seneca squad under the lights here at Canal Park, Nate. That's right, Tommy. All right, folks, we're going to step aside, take a quick time out. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with the post-game show brought to you by your legacy federal credit union. We'll have our player of the game brought to you by MST Sauce Company, and we'll break it down, and we'll wrap things up here from Canal Park in Akron, Ohio. Once again, your final score, Highland 4, Calvert 1. We'll be back after this. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Federal Credit Union, your premier financial institution in Seneca County since 1952. Your community, your legacy, federally insured NCUA. You're watching right here on Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. Betting happens as fast as sports and now every play is faster than ever before. You're on the edge of your seat until the moment when it's all on the line, which is why it's important to pause before you play. Sports are fast, betting shouldn't be, so remember to set limits, know the risks, and pause before you play. To learn more, visit pausebeforeyouplay.org. Brought to you by Hope and Fostoria and the Carsa Coalition of Seneca County. You're watching right here on Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. Why go to Lease Floor Covering of Tiffin? Why not just go to one of those big box DIY stores? Because at Lease Floor Covering, they know that selecting the right flooring for your home can be overwhelming. They make choosing the right items for your home simple. At Lease Floor Covering, they have one of the largest selections of floor covering in Northwest Ohio, and they make the decision-making process easy. Stop in and see what everyone raves about at Lease Floor Covering in Tiffin. You're watching right here on Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. All right, and we're back here, Canal Park, at Rubber Duck Stadium. Nate Mullins alongside Tommy Hall, Greg Kinn up here in the press box with us. Austin Rodriguez, our camera operator, down there in the dugout with a somber Seneca's team as they fall to the Highland Hawks by a final score of 4-1. to one. Seneca's held the lead throughout the entire ball game all the way up until the top of the seventh when a young man by the name of Grady Monogold stepped to the plate with a runner at second base. One out away, man. And, <laughs> yeah, just one out away from a state final trip. Seneca's unable to make that final out. And the Hawks moving on to face Rushi. Tomorrow, right, Saturday, right here at Canal Park here in Akron, Ohio. Nate Mullins on the call once again with Tommy Hall. You're tuned in here on the post-game show, brought to you by your legacy Federal Credit Union. And what a ball game we had here today, folks. 4-1 to one is your final Highland over Calvert. Um, you know, I got hats off to Blake Coleman. What an outstanding performance today by that young man, going seven innings all the way into the eighth inning. He did give up that leadoff base runner, so he'll be credited with that run allowed. So he did give up two runs. But in all fairness, I mean, that young man really pitched one heck of a ball game when his team needed it the most. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he did a heck of a job here today. Like I said, you one out away. You were one out away from being done with this game. Yep. <laughs> you had the lead. You can't discredit that. <laughs> and you were one out away from a date here on Saturday. And, again, it's frustrating when uh, – 
you know, you circle this day on your calendar. You 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 go through camp. You go through the open trainings. You even play travel ball in some instance. And you field a team this year that had went to the state semifinal one year ago from this exact location, and uh, it, it slipped through their hands. You had a lot of youth in, uh, at that point on the mound and Blake Coleman, but then you graduated a ton of talent. This year, in another situation, you had a lot of a young wave of uh, youth coming into this uh, Seneca squad and some great senior leadership by uh, Nick Palm and Mason Johnson, who, again, know what it's like to be at this level. They, you know, to kind of round out your career in your three seasons by having a regional final appearance, state semifinal appearance, state semifinal appearance. I mean, in a lot of respects, here's what you got to tell yourself as an athlete. You appreciate each day. That's right. You appreciate each chance you get to go out there and put on a uniform. Because I tell you this much, unless you're in the pros, you ain't playing baseball in June. Yeah. And a lot of these athletes were blessed and had that opportunity to uh, make it to this point. So, again, you you weren't able to finish the job, but there's no reason to hang your head in shame. You get to uh, get to a point where a lot of got people never even get to in their baseball career again. You kind of end it here under the bright lights, and I couldn't think of a bigger stage to end it on if you have to. And that's just, you know, that's what sports at the uh, high school level does. It doesn't, that's right. It doesn't prepare you for the now. It prepares you for the after baseball, life after baseball. And uh, Coach Coleman and this Seneca squad, you got a lot of uh, bright young individuals who uh, are going to be better baseball players and better men because of uh, what they went through with this program. And it's just, you know, it's one of those tough moments that uh, you hate to see. But, again, only one team could punch your ticket to the state final. And uh, the Senecas, they got away from them this year. But they're going to be uh, bringing back a bevy of weapons with them into the off season and next season. So I don't see this as being the last run for these Calvert Senecas. Yeah, absolutely. We'll take a look at our uh, game wrap-up stats here in just a moment. But uh, once again, you're tuned in here on the Your Legacy Federal Credit Union post-game show. We do have to crown our MST Sauce Company player of the game. <sighs> you know, Tommy, for me, obviously Blake Coleman had himself one heck of a ball game. But, you know, when you talk about this team, the driving force behind this team all season long was those seniors. And it really started and ended with Mason Johnson and Nick Palm. And I think if you had, if I had to give it to anybody, I'd have to say I'll give it to the seniors today just because those two really carried the torch for this program. And you talk about the future's bright. There are so many young, talented players on this team. They'll be back, Tommy. They ain't going anywhere. You got a lot of talent coming back. How many? Four freshmen starting in the lineup today? You had A.J. Shoemaker's a freshman, Connor Moyer, Cameron Moyer, and uh, Jacob Kidwell, all starting in the lineup today. Those were all four freshmen today. So, And then, of course, we all know the Coleman family. Brandon and Tucker, they're not coming up next year. They'll be up the year after that. So, Tommy, there's a lot of really good baseball still left in this Calvert squad. And they're just getting started as far as I'm concerned. This is going to be a long run of really good baseball for Seneca baseball fans. Absolutely. And tonight we'll give uh – the seniors, their flowers as our MST Sauce Company players of the game. Congratulations to Nick Palm and Mason Johnson, both all Ohio players. And in their careers, like we talked about with Nick Palm, he'll uh, retire his Calvert cap as the career hits leader and uh, run scored leader for Tiffin Calvert. And Johnson, the uh, leader in career RBIs and wins and losses with 16-1 and one in his career as pitcher yeah. for the Senecas. And... Uh, Nine home runs in a single season by the Big Johnson. So, again, you got to uh, think he's probably holding that pitching record warm just for maybe a year until Blake Coleman takes over next year. Cause <laughs> and both of these athletes, they did it in three seasons. And, That's right. Uh, man, my hat's off. And what a pleasure it was to uh, get to watch these young men uh, do what they love to do. And that's uh, play sports. And that's what we love to do. We love, again, we love to cover these athletes. Athletes, give them the platform to showcase their talent, showcase that, their skills, and I uh, couldn't be more blessed and proud to uh, have got to see these young athletes, uh, you know, 
come out here tonight and put it all on the line and, uh, you know, end their careers as Calvert Senecas. Absolutely. All right. Well, Tommy, if you talk about keys to the game today, I think really what it came down to was, you know, you, you talk about composure, you talk about discipline, you talk about patience. Those are all just qualities that you look for in a championship team. And that's what you saw today from the Highland Hawks. You, I mean, you talk about patience. I mean, these guys didn't go up there just flailing away. They were they were patient all the way up until their final out, potentially, in the seventh inning when they were able to work the count, get their pitch that they wanted, and they got, they came back to win that game in extra innings. So I think, for me, keys to the game today, just, you know, patience, discipline, those are big keys for me when, I, when you talk about a championship team. This is the number one seed in Division Four this year for the majority of the year, a star-studded lineup, and, and they, they face the defending state champion, Rushi, this Saturday. So they're going to need a lot of that composure, a lot of that discipline, and a lot of that patience this Saturday as they face Rushi. And I think that's a good warm-up for uh, Rushi. These uh, Berlin Highland uh, Hawks found themselves in a precarious position that they're not used to having to chase a lead, having to play f- from behind and rally back as these Senecas. They threw everything they had at the uh, Hawks. Just the uh, Hawks were able to come out ahead and be able to finish the game, and that was the key difference here tonight from uh, Canal Park here in uh, Akron, Ohio. That's absolutely right. All right, Tommy, any final thoughts before we wrap things up? We still got to do the uh, delayed video broadcast here, so I want to make sure we get enough time to get that in if we can get it in here tonight. But what a phenomenal ball game here today. And, I mean, it was great to be on the call with you again, partner. Absolutely, and uh, I just want to thank all the fans and everybody who were so overwhelming with their support this yes. season and our community-minded sponsors that helped bring us our baseball coverage to you for the second year. And, uh, again, we were able to do that live and paywall th- free thanks to our community-minded sponsors. And uh, we'll keep doing it as long as they'll keep having us. And we want to thank you, the fans, for bringing the attention to our brand and going on this ride with us, liking and subscribing to our social media pages, and also watching and supporting these young athletes. As Again, the word gets out, that's the best form of advertising, and these community-minded sponsors, they picked up on that, and they were able to uh, hitch their wagon and allow, and allow us to bring this to you. So, again, I just want to thank you for bringing me on and also our sponsors for uh, bringing this game to you live and paywall free. Well, let's thank those sponsors once again right here on Heart of Ohio Sports. You're presenting sponsors tonight, Chicadette Mexican Restaurant and your legacy Federal Credit Union. Also want to give a shout out and a thank you to Hope and Fostoria. Check out the Walk for Recovery this Saturday as yours truly will be an MC. I don't have any other duties this Saturday, so I guess I'll be there at live and in person doing the MC duties for the Walk for Recovery. That's once again Hope and Faustoria presenting the Walk for Recovery this Saturday at Hedges Boyer Park. Also thanks to MST Sauce Company, Lease Floor Covering, Linda S. Ritzler Accounting, TPC Food Service, Ewald's Furniture, BNE Barbecue, Circle H Tire, DAH Wraps, Benchwarmers Restaurant and Delivery, Fiesel's Frame and Collision, First National Bank of Sycamore, Steinmetz Signs and Graphic Inc., Klaus Electric, GW's Restaurant, Simply Susan's, and Carmi's Restaurant. Once again, folks, your final score, 4-1. to one, Highland moving on to face Rushi this Saturday right here at Canal Park. But for us, that's going to close the book on the baseball season for the 2023 year. What a phenomenal season it has been. We can't thank you enough for joining us alongside for the ride. Thanks to our producer and engineer, Greg Kinn, for everything that he did all season long. Folks, when you see him out, make sure you give him all the thanks and support because he deserves it. He's done a phenomenal job for us this season, making us look really good. Thanks to all of the crew here at Heart of Ohio Sports for another phenomenal season. We'll catch you in football season, folks. That's right. The end of August, we'll be back for more high school sports right here on Heart of Ohio Sports. That's going to do it for Tommy Hall, Greg Kinn, and Austin Rodriguez. I'm Nate Mullins signing off from Canal Park in Akron, Ohio. Thanks again for tuning in here on Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. Have a good night, everybody.